Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm about Joe Hunk, Legarius Sneed, as well as Rand Carthon met with the media earlier today. Legarius Sneed talked about, you know, money, because a lot of times once you get it, you just, it just kind of changes you a little bit. Uh, the money don't change anything. You know, I love this game for the game. The money just for my family, you know, to get them right. Take a little pressure off my shoulders, you know. Now I can do what I love and play ball. Also coming up tonight, Preds host the Boston Bruins. Just so happens to be one of the top three teams in the NHL over at Bridgestone. Puck is going to drop at 7 p.m. For all your foundation repair waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home 23HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three, two, one, zero, four, five. The zone. What up, Nashville? Hope you're having a good day. Watch out. We will keep you updated in terms of the weather. Head on a swivel day. We had one round come through. There's another one coming through. Uh, so we'll see what's up with that, and we will keep you updated as you roll through three HL with us. Happy Tuesday to you. A lot of Titans information today. LJ, Legaria Snee met with the media today. We have tons of audio for you from that deal. LJ, also, we're on a first. Uh... Nickname basis. Nickname basis now with them. With everybody. What up, LJ? Cheeto and LJ and McCrary needs one now. Yeah. MC he, MC Rary? No, he got one. What is um, it? Um, I forgot. Short Tiny arms. Hands. Tiny hands, short <laughs> arms. Golly, y'all. <laughs> it was short arms, right? It wasn't tiny hands. Oh, yeah, no, tiny hands is Kyle Phillips. <laughs> is he tiny hands too? I don't know. Uh, anyway, Rand Carthon met with the media also. Um, we've got Bo Nix. Difference between being a starting quarterback in the SEC and Pac-12. It goes beyond that. He talks about how football is too important in the South. Sure. <laughs> it's so my man, weird. My man's trying to get drafted. I'm like, that was a terrible comment, buddy. Where they don't want you to be affected by anything. Yeah, come on. And that'll play down here in the South. Uh, mm. He played at Auburn, then went to Oregon. Uh, he grew up an Auburn fan, actually. Um, so uh, that's, the, that's the craziest, the crazier part of it. Yeah, there was one other bit of audio that I need. Oh, you need, huh, you need to pull the Angel Reese uh, hasn't been happy since the national title thing. That's in our that uh, what's up, uh, what's up, what's up uh, <laughs> st- uh, thread. Uh, she, Which I haven't she, seen in two days. Oh, she I hasn't been happy since the natty. Yeah, uh, so Babs dropped her phone at church, busted it because she didn't have a screen projector, and then she got a new one, And uh, but she had to go through insurance, so they got to send it to you instead of you just getting it right there at the store. And now she's in the process of downloading her contacts, which I told her when I had to do that most recently, it took two days. Oh, I can't, I can't do two days. Dude, this software update isn't even done yet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's gonna take. That's gonna about take two days by itself. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I hate well, you everything. have to stay connected to the internet. So if there's a blip at all on the internet, what? Oh, by the way, what is going on with the with the cricket? That hey, was Bert. Bert. What do you mean that Bert. was Bert? We were right in where we thought it cr- was coming yeah, it was, from. It is a live no, cricket. No, it was his April Fool's prank. If you guys missed the show it's yesterday. It's not April Fool's anymore, Bert. Come get this crap out of here. It was yesterday. That's Hunk. No. Hunk's hands are right here. Hunk's not touching anything. That's... I want your hands to be there for the remainder yeah, of the show. I, no, me. I hear it. Oh, do you but, have it? Yeah, it's called a cricket prank. Oh, there it is. I took it from Bert. Here, do it. it. It's on the timer. It's on the timer? It is on a timer. He had three of them in this room. Three of them in. They were in the ceiling. Which is why one of them was behind, behind the, the fridge, fridge yep. which I went and checked. Yep. <laughs> I was and like, we got to save these cr- this cricket. He's in here somewhere. Now do you want to kill the cricket? No, I want to kill Bert. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, he swore me to sleep. He's not an animal. So. <laughs> you knew like, about it? Oh, yeah, I knew about it at, like, noon yesterday. You no. traitor! So I listened to you guys, like, totally just go through this, and I was laughing my tail off about it. because What knew. a traitor. Because <laughs> I knew. Cause, you cause, are no longer a teammate. Because Bert said he had something planned for this morning to let everybody know. So every time you guys talked about it on the air, I sent him the times that y- y'all talked about it. So that I could pull it. So you should have yeah. sent him the video of me standing right. up on the desk going through. <laughs> I didn't even see that. That's what when y'all start talking about it on the air. I was doing something else. I didn't even see you standing on the Ooh. on the table. I knew I knew it was up high yep. somewhere. You said it, you said it in the ceiling. I just didn't think to check the guitar on the ceiling. Like dog, that was. I said, come on, dog. For hey, that, I that heard. Was I heard. I heard him talking about it with that you on RKW, and I was like, that, was that little it, it snake. Got us. That was a good one. That was a good one, Bert. Mm-hmm. Demario on uh, on YouTube. That was hilarious this morning. When Slay found out what it was this morning, <laughs> yeah. it was this way. The yeah. only reason I knew is because I was listening to Ramon, so, Kayla, Will. So, but also, I couldn't text Bert and go at him because <laughs> right. I don't have a phone right now. So, uh, do we need to be mad at Slay because he continued this without telling us? No, no I, I found out this morning. <laughs> no, he's. I okay. know. No, but, I just. But it was no, continuing I, during our show today. I stole it. Yeah, he has it in his hand. Yeah. That is bunk. Hey, uh, sacrificed. so it, what day is it? Tuesday? Yes, Tuesday, April 2nd. So can I do the intros? Because yes, may. it's Mayor's birthday. I hate that so much. We picked this hey, one specifically hey, for you, Mayor. Hey, 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 hey. All right, hey, I love y'all. Hey, hey, I appreciate hey, your birthday. Oh, oh. It's your birthday. This day it's is no different than any birthday. other day. That's your birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. It's not me, it's, day. Day. it's yeah. your day, that's what we say. Hey. Hey. Yours. yours is coming hey. out hey. birthday. Hey. 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 Happy your birthday. Quit deflecting hey. your hey. When is your birthday? Hey. It's coming hey. up. Hey. Accept it. Quit deflecting. Don't pour honey all over yourself. Good job, honk. Good job. <laughs> Good pull. <point. laughs> I'm pouring honey all over myself. The fake crickets will get me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, y'all. Happy uh, birthday, happy Mayor. Birthday, we love you, man. She yeah. is Badsy, right there. Yes, I'm in the building. <laughs> That's 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 bunk. That's right. That's bunk. That is bunk, Bert. Twitch, please. Twitch, please. Here we go. Happy Tuesday, people. I uh, I hope you get your phone situation rectified. I know y'all can't talk yeah, to we me. Don't, we, <laughs> she just been gone. I mean, out of here. Me and Slay had a nice little conversation on the text strand this, this morning. I it can didn't even see. Dawn on me that she's not. Huh, yeah, I'm fully intended. Yeah. No, I had like uh, it was something like eighty. Wow. Text message. Like, I can kind of see it on my phone. If you're on the Zone TV chat, you can see what happened to my phone. So, like, you can see when texts come in, but, like, you can't, I can't do anything about it. I can't read them. Can't see them. Yeah, I was shocked because I I read all the text messages once I got here, and when they were talking about Bo Nix, I thought, why hasn't Don said anything about That's why. (laughs) Listen, man. Like, listen, we had World War I and World War II. Y'all, I mean... Like World War Three would be somebody taking our phones. Seriously, hey, can you imagine? Watch out, something might happen. We got this eclipse coming up. People, you know, there's there's the conspiracy theories that all of our technology power is going to be affected by this solar eclipse. If they want to take down, it's April eighth. That's what that's what that's what we'll do. Are we gonna go outside and watch it? Uh, is it like a full on eclipse? It's full on, yeah. Like here? I think we are, I think we're like 80%. Oh, okay. 85%. Because literally here. your first day here was the eclipse, wasn't right. it? Yeah, we were up on, we the on the roof. Because we went on the roof. So I think I've seen three. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Is that right? I, I don't know. Oh, David said 95%. We're 95%. I only remember the one. I remember was I was at East. I remember there was one when we were a kid where yep. you look at it on a piece of paper. Yep. They took us outside to school and let us do it. Mm. Then the other one was what you talking about with Babs. Yeah. I think I was in Italy. So this That was be the six third years, one. seven years, almost seven years yeah, ago this now. would be the third one for me. I heard it was 2017. Is that not right? Yeah, that's seven years. <laughs> I'm going to live in Mayor, eclipse years. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. But yeah, that was almost seven years ago. Yeah. It's been a day. Uh, the executive producer of 3HL is Joe Hunt. Sup. Sup. <laughs> Sup. <laughs> He's got to get it in. Slay Dog's here. Can't do it. Hey, I'm in the building. <laughs> Just believe I'm in the building. He's still so recovering. I'm, I'm in the building. Build, build. I ain't got no rules. Time for the show. That's amazing. The person can be loud. <laughs> you can't even comprehend it right now. No, nah, I don't like yeah. dang. I, can make it loud. I lose my voice twice a year. It has nothing to do with like an Elite Eight game, though. Yeah, mine was 
straight yelling. <laughs> Coming off the Sweet 16. Uh, let me let me start here real quick and give props to the ladies uh, because those two Elite Eight games last night for the women were awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, UConn took out USC to get their 20. Is it 24 Final Fours? I think, that, I think that's right. I wouldn't doubt it. 80 to 73. Paige, I mean, Paige Beckers, they call her Paige Buckets, and Juju Watkins. I mean, these four ladies, man, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, we'll get to in a second, but, I mean, they put on a show, all four of them. Paige Beckers, 28 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists for UConn. Juju Watkins, 29 points and 10 boards. She's just a freshman. Uh, oh, very emotional yeah. after the game. Um, so UConn into the Final Four again uh, earlier in the season. Number one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gino Oriema seems like like there's something going on with him. What do you mean? He wasn't like his usual self last night. His usual intolerable self? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. And very quick-witted and thinking fast and all those things. Like, he was just like, kind of like, eh, okay. Well, how old know. is he? I, I don't know, but, like, this is the first time I've noticed it, where they asked him, like, in-game interview, like, what do you need to do better? And he just kind of rambled for, like, five minutes. He may be a rambler. But he hasn't been. Oh. You know what I mean? He What's wrong with you? 70 years old. What's wrong with you? I mean, 70. They delivered my food and just left it outside the door. Oh, it'll get taken. Huh, go. I said leave it to the, I said, I shouldn't have left him no, hey, no, no Zep, I shouldn't have left him no tip, there's, man. A, there's nobody down there in there. I know no. I shouldn't have left no, him no No, but tip. I'm telling you, leave food outside downtown, see what happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're on the way. It's, it's been stolen off our front porch so yeah, many it's times. It's like I'm legend. Well, Zev's got you. <laughs> when, yeah, when, just when, head over to Tent City. It's when the dark, the dark comes no, out. Tent City. Uh, uh, Edie's got Tent City down. Yes, he does. All this. I love it when the big guys it's pitch a tent. A tent. Baby. You know it. I love when the big fellas get down there and pitch a tent. Boy, listen, if you, voice. listen, if you did that <laughs> in this voice, it'd sound it's a old. lot different. I can't get it. <laughs> Come on, creepier. I got like five, six words, and then I got to go break. Caitlin Clark did her thing. Iowa gets the payback from last year. It's funny watching in-game basketball tweets because people overreact early. And, like, Angel Reese was just dominant early. And I kept seeing these tweets from, like, I thought it was Greg Doyle maybe from the Indianapolis Star, but there were some others. Yeah, that would be fitting. Where they were like, Caitlin Clark. Because he bow- overreacts to everything. Somebody tweeted, Caitlin Clark's bowing down to the moment. And I'm like, okay, you going to say that about yeah. her? I would wait a second. Like, <laughs> Let's see what happens. And then, because now I'm sure that Greg Doyle tweet is, oh, well, this didn't age well 41 yeah, points later. To be fair, it might not have been him, but. <laughs> no, it probably was. <laughs> anyway, she had 41 points, 12 assists, and seven rebounds. It's ridiculous. The, how hard are those advanced the, the court passes that she's made? She made it was a 55 foot pass. Yeah, one of them. It's time. You got to actually practice this stuff. There's nothing you can do, like, as far as. To like, keep out. your player running, yeah. Yeah. too. You got to practice. And saying some people just got the gift of timing. Outlet pass. This Kevin Love was like that. Like, you, you got to have. Carol Lawson was like that. Mm-hmm. It's almost like passes. a hand eye, yeah. like timing. perception kind of thing. But how much how much fun would that be to play with someone like that? Because I would be running the floor nonstop. It's dude. Magic. Magic yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Same thing. Like, you, you, anticipation and all of that. Angel Reese, 17 points, 20 boards. I think she had 14 in the first quarter. She was killing. And then she hurt her ankle. Yeah, that hurt. Uh, and you could tell, like, she couldn't mm-hmm. run uh, like she normally does. Those are the games predicated on, too. Yep. Women's Final Four, NC State, South Carolina. South Carolina favored by 11.5. UConn and Iowa, Iowa by 2.5. NIT Final Four tonight, Utah and Indiana State. This is at Butler. It's an hour from Indiana State's campus. Yeah, and Indiana State is pissed mm-hmm. that they, they got snubbed. Yep. They yep. should have been in. And, yeah. and it'll be a home game for them, and they are favored by three and a half tonight, six o'clock on ESPN. If you haven't seen them play, they're a fun team to watch. Uh, Georgia uh, started three. They they went to the NIT. They changed their lineup. Started three freshmen, um, and they're playing Seton Hall. Seton Hall favored by four and a half, 830 on ESPN2. Um, when we come back, we'll talk uh, about Legereus Sneed, and you'll hear from the new Titans cornerback next, 3HL1045 The Zone.
What's happening, good people? Ron Slay here with Holistic Stem Cell Therapy. Yes, this is not a sexy voice or anything like this. Holistic Stem Cell Therapy is something that you got to get involved in because all the aches and pains and all of that and the inflammation that's going on in your body, it will be attacked. That's right. I'm telling you right now because I did it. I did it on my knee, did it on my shoulder, my hip. Also, growing a little bit of everything, man. It was almost like an oil change. It felt terrific. All those long plane rides and in-car traveling, going and doing walking. Don't have to ice down after. Don't have to pop a leave and things like that before. I'm all good. Your body, your cells, it's your solution. Also, with congestive heart failure, lung issues, arthritis to autism, does not matter. All you got to do is line up with Dr. Kellum, get your consultation, hit him up at 615-850-4415, at 615-850-4415, and you can get all your questions answered. Just go on in now, tell him Big Slay sent you over there, and guess what? KellumStemCellInstitute.com will be right there at your service. All right, you guys heard me talking about the truck. Yes, I bought a new F-150 from Two Rivers Ford, and there's a reason that Two Rivers Ford has been around for over four decades. I got to experience all of that in the purchase of my truck. The sales team there, they don't work on commission. They are just there to service you, answer your questions, help you out, bring a vehicle to your home or office to test drive. That's what they did for me with the truck. And then I fell in love with it and never gave it back. That might happen to you as well. Uh, They just want to make your experience the best it can be. And I promise you they do that for absolutely everybody. And guess what? They have these mobile service options, the exact same price you would pay at the dealership, but you can schedule pickup delivery service to Rivers Ford. will come pick up your vehicle, leave you a loaner, service your car, and then bring it back when it's ready. This mobile experience division is awesome. It's 2024. Everything comes to you now, right? Well, yeah, Two Rivers Ford comes to you as well. Maintenance, they'll perform basic maintenance like oil change or new brakes right at your home or office. Two Rivers Ford, if you're looking for a new vehicle, they pretty much have something for everyone there. Go visit my friends at Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer.
The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing. Three HL one zero four five. This is Zone Tupac Tuesday. Hope you're having a great day. Again, uh, weather aware today. We'll we'll be all on top of it for you. Keep your head on a swivel. We had one line go through. It was pretty quick, and then uh, another one coming. Last I saw, between three and five. Um, Nashville severe WX is a great follow to keep um, up with all this stuff. Um, there are. Yeah, there are a bunch of cells in the area right now. Um, there's some strong cells south of Franklin. Look like maybe headed toward Murfreesboro and northwest of Dixon. Um, so we'll keep you updated with uh, watches and warnings and all those things. So um, 3HL1045, The Zone, Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. You into the NIT tonight, Slay Dog? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to check it out a little bit, man. Indiana State minus the three and a half, Georgia plus the four and a half. Who Georgia got? Seton Hall. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to check it out. I ain't got nothing to do. Well, I'm trying Why to not? My, I'm trying to get my voice back. Oh, my gosh. Mike Keith's got some great, uh, great advice for that. I can't remember what it is. Will, Will, Lee, like, Will Lee gave me a nice little honey, honey too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Honey and hot tea and... Bourbon. Maybe a little, little shot of bourbon. I ain't going to know no, So what I was told is Big anything alcohol-wise dehydrates you and actually inflames what's already well, inflamed. I'm, I'm going to be dehydrated now. <laughs> you already there's, are from the weekend. A, there's something <laughs> called Entertainer's Little Secret, I think, is one thing. Ask Mike Keith. He's got it. Okay. Yeah, text him. Yeah, the bot you know. He's out there doing stuff. On I got my I'm going to make my tea. I thought I was going to get my meal. All Uber driver, um, not Uber driver, but people that do DoorDash, pay attention and be able to read, y'all. If you can't read, like, ask somebody. Do a job where you don't have to read? No, ask somebody. Like, it's okay to ask questions. I, I learned as a little kid, there is no dumb question. If you can't read, you know, you didn't have the ability, it's okay. Just ask somebody, hey, where does this go? Or do speak to text and there type it into your dumb questions. So here's what happened. Uh, <laughs> Slay Dog questions. ordered some Chick-fil-A. He was expecting it to be here, like, before the show started. Um, it gets delivered, apparently. Zeph goes down to Allegedly. get it. Allegedly. That whatever was downstairs was not for Slay. Slay's got delivered to the old Cumulus building, which we've been in this building since at least 2009. Stupid. No. It's happened before. We started started 3HL in the other building, so maybe 2012. Anyway, it's been more than 10 years since we've been in this building. It's also been stolen. And also, you put the address in there, and they still delivered it to the old building. That's that's what I'm saying. Yes, it also gets stolen sometimes. So, I just go so what do you do now? Go hungry. Is that it? Yep. And then be hangry in just a second. <laughs> hey, Slate, we have a bunt cake. Yeah, I need some food, man. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. All day. I bought... Uh, I want one of them, but I can't... That can't happy be birthday meal. to our mayor. We love you. This is from um, Don Davenport. No, it's from it's from all of us. Yeah, but I know who it is. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Slate dog. You want some of this? Man, I got to eat some first, I can't, man. I can't eat all this. Oh, no, I'm going to eat some, but Did I got to eat some food them? first. There's a whole bunch of sugar. I know, but you like them. <laughs> What's we like? Ow. <laughs> so How hard is pe- it to get in the box, When people man. don't get tipped no more, y'all y'all remember this. And I'm a good tipper. Oh, look at this. Babs made sure of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did make sure of it. Those uh-huh. look super moist. That look like the birthday cake one. 
back at the top. It's an assortment. Oh, that sounds even better. I love red velvet. I love the birthday cake one. Laura, Laura said, is it zero bars? No, it's uh, <laughs> bunt cakes, little right. buntini. Laura, we should have got zero bars for them. 615-737-1045 if you want in. Um, so, LeJerry Snee went, met with the media today. Um, Titans better right now than at any point last year at cornerback. Before we get to that, Tristan and Brentwood wants to weigh in. Tristan, what's up? Hey, uh, thank you for taking my call. Yeah, man. I think Purdue is going to win the whole um, tournament and, uh, um, as well. in Iowa. Uh, I just wanted to see Iowa win it all like – uh, I love them beating LSU uh, and Caitlin Clark. Man, she is a great basketball player. And I think we trade down on uh, uh, the seventh overall pick. I think we get out of that and trade down and get more picks and get a defense lineman and then uh, knocking it out. tackle in the second round. Yeah. Man, you Tristan, go. you are just knocking it out today, bro. Men's oh, basketball, you. women's basketball, yeah. Titans draft. Boom. We used to say bullet point that witch. And he definitely did. Thank you, Tristan. Job, Appreciate Tristan. it. Um, in terms of women's basketball, for the women's uh, Sweet 16 game between Iowa and Colorado, almost 7 million viewers took that game in. That was the second most watched women's game ever. Can't wait to get last night's numbers in. It should happen while we're on the air. I feel like both games last night will eclipse that. Yeah, I think they, man, next time they'll put um, Juju Watkins and Paige Beckers in them first. That totally agree. Been last. Totally agree with that. I couldn't even. I love Juju, and I love Paige Beckers when she's healthy. It's I. I couldn't watch it with the same enthusiasm as I did the first game. Why? Because you were tired. No, that first game was everything. It was yeah. so intense. It was, it was too good. Like mm. I loved uh, uh, Van Lith's reactions because <laughs> she was doing the best she could. That's, that's horrible Kayla, coaching. Kayla Clark, I want to get to that because there, there's been some questions about Kim Mulkey. And she she defended herself right after the game because she knew those questions were going to come, I think. Mm-hmm. But Van Lith's reactions, like, because Kayla Clark wasn't just hitting three. She was hitting 30 footers. And Van Lith was so deep. And Van Lith would go running by her and she would just put her hands in the air. Like, what am I supposed to do? And so, like, yeah, um, so Kim Mulkey, after the game, she said, we defended her the same. She wasn't even asked this, but she was like, we defended her the same way last year, and she went off, and but we still won. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You didn't defend her the same way. What should they have done? They should have put one of those long athletic wings on her, like Flage. Flage should have been yeah, on her easily. the whole game. It shouldn't have been no question. Uh, Haley is, what, 5'9 on a good day? She's not no, quick. she's five seven. You see what I'm saying? She's not. She's quick five tips. seven. She was giving up five inches to Caitlin. Guarding Clark. somebody six one that can shoot from anywhere. That that was so so silly. But um, they also didn't do a good job on her. Um, or, or teammates either twenty one and eighteen. That hurt. Right, so, and I think that's the difference in Caitlin Clark between last year and this year is she's such a more more of a distributor of the basketball now. Yeah. Um, I mean, she got to be assist. Yeah. Because you're gonna get double teamed. Because you're gonna shoot bad. Somebody's shots. gonna be open. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so NC State Duke, fifteen point one million viewers for NC State Duke. So it's because you either want to watch Duke win or yeah, lose. lose. There yep. is no in between. So and it's not because NC State's Cinderella and all that. It's because people either love or despise Duke. So more viewers for NC State Duke, fifteen point one million, than all but five college football games last year. How about that? That take that in is crazy. So I mean, because college football is a king, right? But are we I mean, seeing, NFL the, is king, are we seeing yeah. the growth? Are we seeing this ultimate growth of college basketball? Also, yeah, without question. I think I mean, it's in. A, I think it's in a great space. The NIL has created it to be though. So there's older players. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the basketball's better. Yep. That's why I think you saw the elevation of the women's game take off the way it is because they always stay four years. Like mm-hmm. you had guys staying in the men's game, one or two years, and then bolting. So you didn't have that superstar. You had more star power now, so it's trying to even back out. Do people hate Duke less now that Coach K's gone? No. No? I it's it's, it's, it's the team. It's, the it's the mm-hmm. program. Yep. It's it's the it's success. The mm-hmm. Yeah. Sarah's photo on YouTube says, let Slay go get his food. I knew people stupid. He would go get his food. But, but it's not here. they 
took it to the, the wrong place. How long would it take you to drive? Maybe Zeph would do it for you. Did you call him and let <laughs> him know <laughs> that it's no, in the wrong I'm, I'm calling him on the break. I'm going to call him immediately. Uh, you can watch the show YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. I'll never tip them again. A lot of y'all are saying happy birthday to me, and I really appreciate that. Uh, thanks for thinking of me. And um, to everyone on social media, I'm trying to write everybody back personally that writes me, um, but it's going to take a minute. So uh, <laughs> if you have written me on social media, I appreciate it, and uh, it means a lot to me. Thank you. 615-737-1045, and I will get to you. Steve in Nashville. Steve, what's up? What's up, y'all? Yo. That was the most remarkable performance. Slay you wrong, brother. You let her get 48 points. You let her get 50 points. The difference in the game is this. That that other girl, that Afala girl and the other girl, they didn't score last time. Okay? That's why LSU won. So what you need to do, you're not didn't defending I, her. Didn't I just say that? I thought he said no, that. I just said she gave, said they also. Defend her with, I said, said, said they also. Relax, 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 hey, relax. Hang on. You yeah, might have been. Said, hang, hey, Steve. They hang gave on, up 21 and 18 to her teammates as well. Yeah, you might have been getting processed while he said that. God, well, well, Slay, I apologize, my friend, but you—you you, it wouldn't have mattered. She, hey, she'd have gone around her, and those three she was set, jacking up last night, she's shooting better than any man I ever saw. That's all I got to say. So it's going to be a good well, game. Well, to, to Slay's point, though, and Flage did get in foul trouble. Um, they didn't put her on Caitlin Clark to the end of the game, but the, you did notice a difference because with Van Lith – Caitlin Clark knows she all she needs is one step and go over the top of her. She can she can Van Lith can jump in front of her all she wants to. She can't reach that shot. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway. By the way, while we're on basketball, how about this? The minimum ticket price for the men's final four this morning was five hundred and seventy one dollars. The minimum ticket price for the women's final four this morning was nine hundred and seventy dollars. How about that? A special person playing. Well, I mean, you've got like her and 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 Paige Beckers. That's going to be awesome. Like, mm -hmm. listen, man, if Iowa wins this, they went through the gauntlet. They do. You know, yep. Colorado's a good team. LSU. Can UConn get them? Yeah. Yeah, they can. I think I think Gino does a great job of being able to take the best thing away from your team, and if that's the case, coming off the off the heels of what our teammates just did, let Caitlin go get 40 and just don't let them get 21 and 18. Like, that'll be. Mm. I was only. I got an inside presence, my bad, y'all. Oh, my, no, mine. Um, I was only a two and a half point favorite. So, listen, if, pa if Paige Buckets goes off, which yeah. she probably will, she can play. That's going to be another. I mean, women's game's got it going this year. That's for yeah. sure. Will from the Ville said, happy birthday. Hey, Will from the Ville. I'm just glad y'all made it back from Detroit. That's it. <laughs> Congratulations, mm -hmm. Will, on that deal. 615-737-1045 at 3HL1045. We'll stay with this. Brandon in Shelbyville next. Uh, Brandon, what's up? Brayden, but how y'all doing, guys? Hey, Brayden, what's up, man? I uh, much want to say happy birthday, and I got a question Thank you, for brother. y'all. Before I ask this, I think Rick Barnes is a great coach, and I'm not with the crowd that says he, you know, falls apart in March. I don't believe that one bit. I think it's just, you know, luck of the draw sometimes. But my question is, and I don't know if it would be the right or wrong answer, do you think Tennessee could have maybe went to a zone to try to control Edie a little more? I know Purdue shoots the ball well, but they weren't shooting well that day. I didn't know if you thought that might have not helped. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, somebody called in yesterday. It's a relevant question. Um, Slade, it's just not something they practice a lot. They, I can only remember like two or three possessions all year where they went to zone. Yeah, an emergency. Yeah. But I, I do think. Oh, going, sorry, Braden. I think I think going into that that zone, the reason they didn't shoot well is because you know they they said once they get the ball out, contest high hands and get there early on the shots. A lot of those shots that were contested, it's difficult to contest those in zone because once you get the ball in the middle of the zone, you're at <laughs> you're at the mercy of um, the offense. Then that's that's my take on it. Yeah. I think it's. It, it, He's a difficult person to be able to get, you know what I mean, in position like that. It's it's hard to defend, man. It's, it's hard it's hard to defend. I mean, listen, he's a generational big man. Right, no question. In the college game. No question. Um, and lots of people have tried to defend that. He's got seven double doubles in a row. I mean Yeah. Going through yeah, a, he's a, a conference tournament and this tournament, and they lost one of those games. He's a monster. You okay over there, Babsy? No. <laughs> 
And this phone thing is brutal. I really thought you were about to drop an F-bomb right there. <laughs> it's also easy. Phone. <laughs> phone. Oh. That is an F-bomb. It's also easy to do high-low in against zones, too, which wouldn't be... <laughs> Nick, Nick says this, and literally I did this twice yesterday. Uh, while Slay has his voice recovering, I hope he does a Barry White. Can't get enough of your love, babe. Karaoke because his voice is on point right now. I, I literally sang that song twice yesterday because of his voice being like that. Out <laughs> of all the Barry White songs, that's Can literally you that it? one. Can't do it. What? I'm telling you, it may, it may just go out in the middle of the show. My darling, I... <laughs> Can't get enough of your love, baby. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Now's your time. Get with Lil Ron. Now's your like, time. Record something. Go down to Broadway, Slay Dog. Well, your voice is at its worst. This is your time, Slay Dog. <laughs> hey, go, go into Legends and go, hey, you guys with this little baby band right here, just let me sing for a minute. Let me get this. <laughs> I got it. 615 737 1045. Uh, Paul and Franklin next up on 3HL. Paul, what up? Hey, what's going on? Y'all doing all right? Yo, yep. All right. Hey, I'm going to talk about Tennessee men's basketball program right quick. Look, man, I've been watching Tennessee athletics, Tennessee basketball for 40 years. And remember with Slay Dog, he was out there, man, had great teams. We've always had great teams. But the problem is with our program, and I'm going to be honest with you, we do not recruit a big, solid center at Tennessee. We always get the 6'5", the 6'9", athletic guys, and they'll win you a bunch of games during the regular season. But when we get in tournament time and we go up against the big centers, that's our downfall, a sleigh ride, brother. That's what it's been forever. We've got to start recruiting big, dominant centers to match up with these other teams. That's my comment. Hey, man, thank y'all. God bless you. Okay, but, I mean, let's be fair. Has anyone matched up with Edie? No. Does anybody have a big man that can match up with that guy right now? No. No. And you got to understand, like, we were I mean, there's about one this. in our game right now. We talked about that this guy. a little bit. But, but I don't think he wasn't necessarily saying. I mean, Edie is a, a generational guy. Right. He's yeah. a generational guy mm. in, in college, in the yeah. college game, right? Yeah. Like, they don't make him like him. <laughs> he developed into that, all of that. Yeah. But maybe, so if you take Edie out of the conversation, mm-hmm. does he have a point there? I, Is I, that missing? I, I, I would I would tend to disagree just for the simple fact that that's not the style of the the coach that's coaching the team. That's not Bruce right. Pearl's style. That's the first point. You, you know yep. what I mean? You got Bruce, that's, that's, that wasn't Bruce Pearl's style. That wasn't Buzz's style. That wasn't Jerry Green's style. Although it was Jerry Green's style. He went and got C.J. Black, Charles Hathaway, Marcus Hayslip, myself, you know what I'm saying? So it's just different. The game has evolved differently to where the big man is obsolete. So when you run into this, it's just like officiating them. It's going to be difficult, too, because you don't see these guys. Even don't listen to what Frank Martin, I saw what he put out, talking about everybody that's in the Final Four has a big man that they run the offense through. That's false. Alabama does not run their offense through a big man. No. UConn does not run their offense through a big man. Duke with Filipowski, he is a finesse big man that plays outside, inside. In, outside, in. Oh, it's only one. Which is Zach what the game Edie. is nowadays. Exactly. Yeah. So you're asking a kid, an 18, 19 year old, to come in and say, let me develop you, give me time. Okay, so after his sophomore year, then he's ready to bolt. Then what are you left with? DJ Burns is a six year guy. That doesn't happen, people. So. I mean, hopefully I, it'll start happening I what he's more at. often, but but it's gonna be it, difficult. Here's the other thing, and and it's tough because Adu was basically a no show in that in that Purdue game, so it's hard to make this point. But he was second team All SEC, right? So and I, so, like, okay, Edie's what two years older than him. If you talk about three big men in the SEC, you would talk about Tolu Smith, yeah. Janai Broom, and now the emergence of Jonas Adu. But that's where it stops. You get a little bit of that with. Colin Murray Boyles at South Carolina, but he's a throwback. Like, you don't have these guys out there like that. 615-737-1045 when when you call, we'll go to you. Uh, We'll treat this like a reaction Tuesday. Um, It's that time of year. We do have a ton of audio from Legereus Need that we will get to uh, today. Also, Jim Wyatt will join us at 420. 
um, to talk about the cornerback position better than it was last year. Sneed's presser today. Off-season spending, draft needs, post-free agency. We'll talk with him at 420 about all of that. We also have a cut from Bo Nix where he talks about football's just too important in the South. You're going to love it. 615-737-1045. All right, you hear all of these hair loss commercials and all that, but I want to tell you about HPI Hair Partners and what makes HPI different. They have a team of trichologists that specialize in the science of hair, always looking for answers, options, solutions for your hair loss, and they create a personalized physician-supported solution that is rooted in science. Mayor, we are getting to see all of this firsthand. Yeah, no doubt. I went with your husband when he went to uh, get his consultation. And here's the thing with dudes. Dudes like to put things off. And <laughs> especially with something like this, you don't need to because I, I went and saw what the consultation is. That's all you need to do. Go in there and figure out what needs to happen. They'll talk about your follicles that are there in your head that need to get loved on and produce hair. And they'll tell you and show you how they will get that done. It's so easy for 45 minutes. That's it. So just make that appointment. HBIHairPartners.com. Yes, they're in Maryland Farms. I actually lost hair after I had a baby and then got COVID. And you could see my hair follicles that were not producing as much hair as the back of my head. So I go tomorrow for my first treatment session. And mine's different than my husband's. And it'll be different than yours. They cater to you and they know exactly what they're doing. So go check out HBI Hair Partners, hbihairpartners.com, or just call them for that consultation session 615-662-8722 that's hbihairpartners.com mortgage professionals in middle tennessee hi i'm chuck mcdowell owner of wesley mortgage i'm a true local born in mount julia met my wife at mtsu and i live in franklin While every other mortgage company is cutting back, we're rapidly expanding and investing. Are you sick of feeling like an operations employee to ensure your loans are closed on time? When you look around your office, it doesn't look the same. You're missing people. You're missing your friends. Is anyone having fun? We're having fun every day. As the official mortgage provider of the Tennessee Titans, I've personally recruited the top local operations team to ensure your loans or closed on time. So you get paid. So you get to spend time building your business and you get to have fun at work again. Now is the time to join our team, to start a confidential conversation with our local president and COO. Visit wildwesley.com, wildwesley.com.
3HL, 1045 The Zone. If we get Purdue-UConn in the national title game, UConn favored by six. Hmm. I'm going to tell you this right now. Are you okay over there, Slay Dog? He's eating your uh, your birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all this, both are. I haven't yet. This has got to be it's so good. the most amazing melt-in-your-mouth cupcake that I think <laughs> I've ever had in my entire life. Nothing bunt cakes. I mean, I'm talking about like my entire eclipse life, cicada life. <laughs> like, this is, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. It's it's pretty dark. Wow. Mayor, you're going to have to hit Okay, one. go ahead, because I'm about to eat the rest. <laughs> mm. Oh, my gosh, that voice. Oh, my God. I'm going to tell you this. If Purdue makes it a national championship game, I don't care who they're playing. I will have never rooted so hard for some bunch, couple, like, rooted so hard against a team where I normally wouldn't have a dog in a hunt. I don't like that team man, at all. They're so boring. Mm. And here they are. Oh, they're mercy. Helps to have seven foot four. <laughs> they must. Have, I mean, they so just made. Okay, no, nah, they just made that. I'm talking about like two minutes before Babs walked in. Mm-hmm. I mean, these were sitting here. How long have they been sitting here? Man, not long no, enough. I brought them when I came in. They yeah, all... but you've been in here for a minute because you had to go see it. That is amazing. No, I never made that. Huh. Never made it. What? Oh, because you got to get to all... it. You got to get your phone downloaded. Yeah. Ian, I'll be calling you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> David God, uh, Ferris, uh, he made he made some uh, like he made a picture like there were three pictures of me and like photoshopped and all this stuff on Twitter. And uh, David, I appreciate that. Uh, he wrote the great Canadian eyebrow must lose. Edie, yeah. <laughs> he 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 Slaves kind up of the looks- stuff today, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's putting honey in his now tea. I, just, I look over there thinking he's going to comment on that, and then he's got this big what's, thing of honey. Going. What's the expiration date on that honey, Slay? Oh, no, I just knew it because I'm a honey guy. Okay, I just didn't I know think. if you went to the refrigerator and in the break room <laughs> and just, just no, looked to this, see if there's one in there. I brought oh, this one from wait. home. It's good for you, honey. It's going to be good for me. Honey, 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 honey. honey Slay and looks and sounds like Rick Ross right about now. <laughs> <laughs> My glasses help me see y'all. It's almost like you're a different person with this low-key, no-voice thing. <laughs> it's weird. I'm professional. <laughs> it's like you're a character of yourself. <laughs> it's a different personality that's come out. Let's see how hot this is. <laughs> All right, 615-737-1045. Are y'all with me? Like, if producing a national title game, are you just rooting for whoever the hell they're playing? Even if it's Alabama? I'm rooting for a good game. I'm rooting for a good game. I, no, and I just want to see how it's officiated. I think that's going to be key for me. I need to see how this thing going to go. I think it's going to be, well, I th- I think this next game will be officiated differently because there's so much talk about it. And that's the thing. I think yeah. it'll it'll weigh in a little bit. Like, you can do all the Homer stuff and all that, all you want to, but everybody is talking about this. I know. So That Tennessee game would have been officiated differently had all this talk happened before that game. I tell you what, I'll tell you somebody that won't take the high road, or I ain't going to say not take the high road, but won't bite their tongue. Hurley will not bite his tongue. Mm-hmm. Let let him think that he's camped out in that lane or the file's uneven. Watch, watch what he say. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be good. 615-737-1045. Uh, Legereus Neat met with the media today. Um, Hunk, what you want to start rolling through some of this a little bit? What he Cause I definitely want to get to cut number one. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, because everybody wants to talk about it. All right, so all the talk. During the whole thing was about Legereus knees, need knees, not needs. He got his needs, money. He got the bag. <laughs> he got his needs met. By the so way, good. he said, "Hey, now that I don't have to chase that bag, I can just go play ball." And we'll see. And Blaine loved that. <laughs> see, sorry. <laughs> we'll get to it. I mean, I've seen that. I've, I've heard that before. <laughs> All right. Uh, with regard to the knees, that's uh, literally the first thing he was asked is Legereus need. Oh uh, man, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with my knee. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I played the whole season, and the years before that, I played as well. You know, I had a couple of problems. You know, I had banged up knee before, but I'm good right now. Nothing is really wrong with my knee. So it's not a situation that you have to manage going forward. No, I know what to do with my knee. You know, I'm coming out here to play ball. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. 
He kind of had a little Barry White going there. Yeah, quit talking about my knees. <laughs> hey, That's know, basically what he said. You know what else that sounded like? Last, right. year, last year's draft pick. My knees are fine. My ACLs are fine, people. Tajay Spears. Yeah, oh, yeah, he doesn't have any. Yeah, he was like, all right, y'all quit talking to me about it. He got to that point, too. Guess what? It never came up during the season. Not one time. Some people just know, man. All right, 615-737-1045. More from the new Titans cornerback when we come back. Jerry Sneak, 3HL, 104.5 The Zone. Twitch, please. Want to tell you about outdoor lighting <laughs> perspectives of Nashville. What a dramatic pause there. That's right. I had to transition. Plus your back. She's on her text strand now. Yeah. Your phone's working? Uh, at least my text chain Ooh. to you guys. It is pouring in downtown Nashville. It is pouring. And you know what you might need? Outdoor lighting to be able to see a little bit better. <laughs> and you need to call Bob Lyons, my friend over there at Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville. They're the best. Uh, been a family business since 1986. The family has actually called Nashville home for over 50 years. They do all kinds of lighting. Light up your night. They do the design, the install, the maintenance on it. And if you need holiday lighting, no ladders, no boxes, no mess, they do that. Commercial lighting, festival lights, path lights, wall washing, tree lighting, area lighting, and they even do maintenance on lighting systems they did not install. Are you thinking about it? Well, they offer a free nighttime design demonstration, show you exactly how outdoor lighting perspectives can beautify and enhance your home and landscape. And they have a team where they're raising money for the Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research. Light the Way is the name of their team. How perfect. And any customer that purchases an install up until April 18th, Outdoor Lighting Perspectives will give a $100 donation to Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research in your name. They're working together with you. Go check them out. Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville at OutdoorLights.com slash Nashville.
Good afternoon from the 104.5 The Zone studio. Titans' new cornerback, Legereus Sneed, met with the media earlier today, and he's one of the players that has had and done hip drop tackles in the past. So how does he feel about the new ban on the new rule on the play he cannot use anymore? I do not like that. <laughs> yeah, they might be going to put flags on us. Man. And you play? thinking about that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. am I doing? Is am I going to get called? I mean, how does that? Does it affect? How can? How can you say? Uh, me, me, uh, me. I don't care. Me personally, I'm going to go make the tackle whichever way. If it's that way, I'll take the flag. Uh, whatever. Yeah. I'll make sure I get him down though. Uh, the secondary and the Indianapolis Colts just got a man back as they has just re-signed safety Julian Blackman to a brand new one-year deal. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for your Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL 1045 the zone. What up? A lot of weather out there. It's been pouring in downtown Nashville. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Nashville, this is a, a great Twitter feed you need to follow at Nash Severe WX. Um, and still not out of the woods, um, but there are some, uh, some heavy storms out there. Um, but the threat today was tornadoes, and uh, so we'll we'll see if anything like that develops. But uh, we'll keep you updated. Uh, Don Davenport is here. That's 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 bunk. That's bunk. Twitch, please. Twitch, please. Twitch, please. Twitch, please. Let's go. Do you Happy also Tuesday. have this hatred for Purdue that I have? And by the way, this hatred for Purdue, this year's Purdue team. That happened way before they played Tennessee for me. But I couldn't quit watching them, even though I couldn't stand the way they play basketball. <laughs> I mean, seriously, he just posts up. And and if he doesn't get low enough, then he'll go up to the, the elbow and high pick and roll. And that's it. That's their whole game. Pretty good game. I know it is, <laughs> but it's boring as hell. Uh, Unless you're a Purdue fan. <laughs> then you like it. How's that T treating you? Slay dog. I'm trying to get back. Did you guys know that T didn't expire? I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Is that true? Our honey doesn't expire. Honey doesn't, doesn't expire. expire. I had no idea. I've had, I had a couple of people call that says honey doesn't expire and, and slay the only honey that's really going to help you right now is if you get honey from the state of Tennessee because it, the bees have this type of like stuff inside the honey. That yeah. helps your throat. I heard that um, when it comes to allergies. Yeah, you need like that. the natural honey yeah. or whatever. So you're telling me like if if I die like 40 years from now, you could pour honey down my throat like that you just got off the shelf today? Yeah. I mean, if we could find Ted Williams right now and attach his head to his body, we could totally revive him with just using honey. What if they attach Walt Disney's head to Ted Williams' body and vice versa? Have y'all seen that movie Poor Things? <laughs> that got all the Academy Awards and everything. Like, uh, what's her name? Um, Emma Emma Stone got the best actress. That is the weirdest and darkest and most disturbing movie I've ever seen. I didn't I didn't know what to do with it, but her acting performance was incredible. And the reason why I say that is, her dad was a doctor that would attach heads to various things. Like he hey, put a he put a crazy. duck head on a dog and stuff. And like these things would be running around. That's a weird movie, man. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm, <laughs> it's some of my, some of my ain't gonna lean into Babs. That's the one I'm not, I'm not gonna lean into. The duck heads on a dog body. I mean, they're just running around these creatures. Like my man's just having a good time, you know. Just I'm gonna attach this head to this animal and vice versa. And, Anyway, it's a weird movie, uh, but it was an award winner. So there's <laughs> Is that a family film? That sounds like a family film. Just sit down with everybody, eat some I mean, popcorn. I mean, it's about a family, I guess. Okay, of. our chat on honey is out of control now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Yeah, raw honey. That's what I was looking for. Thank you, Jada. On a wound and it will heal. Oh, I don't know mm-hmm. about that. Is that true? I've never heard that. Y'all better go listen to Jaya. 
my man in uh, my big fat Greek wedding, he would just squirt Windex on everything. Yeah, she had a pimple before her wedding, and he put Windex on it and uh, went away. Honey can be used as a wound dressing to have it to help improve healing. Oh, listen, there you go. Listen to Babs get my last two movie references. What is going on here? Yeah, she doesn't I know. watch and those movies. those movies were Clue and My Big Fat Greek Wedding. <laughs> She's been nice. because Lord help birthday. us. Happy yeah. birthday, you all. Thank you. Well, Jerry Sneed um, met with the media today, New Titans Corner back, and uh, he said to call him LJ, but... Uh, he talked about uh, the Titans defensive coordinator and DB's coach. Oh, man, I love I love the energy. He seems like he's my type of coach as of being aggressive. You know, that's what I like to do. I like to put my hands on guys, I like to be in their face and just be aggressive with guys. You know, they throw everything off time and it all. He's so mm. confident in the way that he, he talks about his game. I like it. But that's what Denard said when he got the job, when people were asking what style of defense. And he's like, well, I mean, you know, you got to – you got to fit it to your your roster, but you know, aggressive, attacking, communicate, over communicate. Mm. That's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Like, do you feel okay? No, I'm perfectly fine. Yeah, it's just I ain't got no voice. Can't talk. Just listen. Makes it hard to do talking. Yeah, it, it doesn't do too well when <laughs> you're one third of the people in that room talking. <laughs> I'm pacing myself. I know he's so calm and everything. I'm trying to work him up, and I can't get it done. I won't be able to give you none. <laughs> He's revving the engine with no gas in it. Uh, Legarius needs revving his engine and uh, talked about what he brings from Kansas City to the Titans. Oh, man, just bring my swagger. You know, just bring what I learned, you know, what the coaches over there installed in me and bring it here, and I think we're going to be okay. Obviously, I'll see you play. What, what would you say you bring to the field, maybe bring to the maybe team, bring to the... Oh, man, um, confidence, you know, resiliency, relentless. I'm a <coughs> hell of a player. You know, I love my game. You know, I, I don't fear anything. You know, I'm not afraid to lose, but I'm going to win most of my reps. <laughs> Dang. I, I like... I, no, I don't I mean, like that. I love that. like... Listen. I love it. Give me that all day. Oh, will, you, will you play that again, what he brings to Tennessee from Kansas City? Oh, man, just bring my swagger. You know, just bring what I learned, you know, what the coaches over there installed in me and bring it here. And I think we're going to be okay. We've obviously all seen you play. What, what, what would you say you bring to the field, maybe bring to the maybe team, bring to the – Oh, man, confidence, you know, resiliency, relentless. I'm a <coughs> hell of a player. You know, I love my game. You know, I, I don't fear anything. You know, I'm not afraid to lose. But I'm gonna win most of my reps. <laughs> I'm with him. I love it. Talk that talk. I'm a hell of a player, man. Look here, man. You go get that money, man. You better talk that talk. Cause you're going to. Cause as soon as that season comes, you got to back it up. And ain't nothing better than having to back up your own talk. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Kyle in Columbia. Kyle, what up? What's going on, guys? Yo, I'm hyped about the speed. Signing everything now finally legit. Uh, him and Ridley, they have some personalities that I can get down with. Uh, the, they got that Butler and uh, AJ Brown attitude, man. They're gonna be going at it in camp. But uh, yeah, Snead sounds pretty confident, but when it came to his knees, tone changed, and there's something there. But uh, I, I'm praying to God that he gets the AJ Brown Philadelphia knees going because we all remember that. Um, and one more thing. What was that? What was that though? Doing for for the knees in in the conversation? What did you? What did you? What did you peep? What What did you? He he was confident until we started really talking about his knees, and he just didn't want to go there. I understand the health; it's none of our business. But to an extent, I mean, he need he could have gone on and eased my mind a little bit more. But he was like, nah, <laughs> he's not worried. About, he's not worried about easing your mind, man. But but I'm glad you brought that up. For those that missed it, this is what he said about his knees when asked about it. Oh, man, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with my knee. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I played the whole season. And the years before that, I played as well. You know, I had a couple of problems. You know, I had banged up knee before. But I'm good right now. Nothing is really wrong with my knee. So it's not a situation that you have to manage going forward. No, I know what to do with my knee. You know, I'm coming out here to play ball. I, I don't know how you sound more confident than that. And he just sounded like he was, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I got a bad vibe from it. Maybe it's just me, but we'll see. If he's at, if he's at camp, he's at camp, and okay. I'm wrong. All right, thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it, man. 
I don't know. I didn't I didn't take that from his response. I my my takeaway from that response was Man, I know you guys have been talking about it behind the scenes saying that it's not going to get done, the deal's not going to happen because of my knee. Like that's dead wrong and I'm not even going to address it anymore. That's yeah. how I took it. I also took that he's tired of talking about his knee. Yeah, right. Uh, it's that, like dude, pulling the curtain back. You you don't understand how many times when you're negotiating how many times you got to go into these I'm speaking from experience walking into the medical to do the the to do the the medical check, like, and then you got to go from team to team. Everybody want to do their own X rays, their own MRIs, and they gonna show you the same thing that you done seen every single time. So in my case, I had thin thin cartilage, like paper, like this paper. This is exactly how they explain it. Your your cartilage looks like this, and I'm mm-hmm. like, dog. I understand how to manage my needs. I know exactly what to do. Of course, they're gonna be like this. I'm. Taking an exam, I'm 30. I've been playing since I was six on concrete. Like, I know what it is. So <laughs> you go through that once, and then you go to the next team. You're like, hey, man, let us. can we look at your knees? Listen, dog, I already told them about my knees. Listen, I'm going to tell you what you're going to see. Yeah. You're going to see the paper looks like my cartilage in my knee. Dog, I never had a knee problem, none of that. Like, I, I think a lot of times um, it's frustration. That's stuff like that is. comes out in negotiations because the agent is – is trying to sell his client, but the team is also the team wants it out there, mm-hmm. so they can negotiate that. Yeah, you're supposed to. Yeah, but as as a player, you're talking to the player. You ain't talking to the team. He keep they asking him. He asked him back to back. Are you sure you dog? Listen, man. <laughs> I just played last year, man. Y'all saw me play last year, right? Yes, everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they Thank won you, a Super Bowl with him I'm, him guarding the best wide receiver every week. Guess what I'm gonna do again? Play again. Now do I need to do stuff that like in the weight room to do extra work to strengthen the muscles around my knee to protect it? Yes. It's part of it too. Make sure my quads and everything right. I gotta do my part. I know what I'm doing. It ain't nothing but I I feel him. <laughs> I feel him. I was, man, what is y'all talking about? What knees? That's why I was it. What knees? What knees you talking about? I ain't even got no knees. I just signed 19 million. Tajay doesn't have knees. Yeah, I'm like Tajay. Yeah. Were y'all happy with him? None of us have knees now. <laughs> like, so is the cap still there if you don't Man, have knees? Yeah, we ain't But like... we just run around with uh, calves and thighs, dog. Calves and thighs. Well, and the other thing, didn't <laughs> he just are ugly too, by the way. play a full season? <laughs> yes. I mean. Yeah. At a championship level. I literally just, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, he played like, the whole season. They won a Super Bowl. He guarded the best wide receiver every week. Sorry. Also, kneecaps are ugly. We'll be right back. 3HL 615-737-1045. More from Snead. Jim Wyatt is coming up in just a minute or two. We'll talk to him about Legereus Sneed and what he heard from the new Titans corner in just a bit. Imagine waking up this time next week and you are 100% debt free. No credit card debt, no car loan, no personal loan. Well, guess what? Loan Pronto can help you do it. And Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen quick, almost instantly. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash. We all have equity in our homes around this area. And Loan Pronto has an AI-based system where you can get approval in about 10 minutes. Almost no documentation, no appraisal, no hassle. Get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home and use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves about $850 a month doing this. How about that? Approval minutes away. Uh, pay off those credit cards. Get money for a home improvement project. LoanPronto.com. You can start the whole process there or just call them. 615-499-5780. 615-499-5780. Loan Pronto. NMLS 1661781. Subject to lender approval. Equal housing lender.
3HL 1045, the zone, Britt Dorney, Don Davenport, Ron Slay, Tupac Tuesday. <laughs> On the zone, talking a lot about the uh, Tennessee Titans and their new cornerback, Legereus Sneed, met with the media today. We will continue to roll through some audio there. Also get uh, get you some um, uh, points made by Rand Carthon as we roll through the show. But right now, Jim White, TennesseeTitans.com, joins us now. Jimmy, what's up? How are you? I'm doing great. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're having a good birthday, Brent. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, let's let's start with Legereus Sneed. What, what was your overall takeaway? Um, clearly a very confident guy. Yeah, he is, and he's got every right to be because he's been one of the best corners in the league over the last uh, couple of years and kind of brings an attitude and swagger with him. And, um, and you know, bringing him to town, you know, along with, you know, Sh- Shadovia Woozy and, and having Roger McCree back there should give this team the best group of corners I think has had maybe ever. I mean, I go back to, you know, to Samari Roll and Denard Wilson and uh, Denard Walker, I should say, and, and then – uh, you know, Donald Mitchell was in that group for a while. Dane City was in that group for a while. But, you know, that was a good group. And obviously, you know, I've had some other good pairing sets. Uh, but this group, I think it's going to be physical. I think uh, it's going to allow, you know, you know, pass rushers to have time to get to the quarterback. And I think all of them are proven players who are really going to be good for this team. Jim Wyatt with us on 3HL. Talking about the cornerback position, when, when you look at uh, the addition of of uh, LeJerry Sneed, he said to call him LJ. Um, but uh, LJ and then uh, Cheeto, and and now that enables uh, Roger McCray to be where he needs to be inside. They are so much better at cornerback right now. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and the key is now to keep them healthy, keep them, um, you know, get them up to speed as far as a chemistry standpoint. I think what's going to make them better these are not just better at corner, but they're better at receiver now, you know, bringing it. Obviously, you got DeAndre Hopkins, but you're bringing a guy like Calvin Ridley in, too. So those guys being able to compete against one another in practices is just going to help get them ready for the season. Yeah, I mean, I think you got guys that you can count on. And not just defending the pass, but guys who are willing tacklers. You know, Rand Carthon mentioned that to me at the owners meetings last week, just the way the games change and those got corners have got to be able to come up and make tackles. Uh, he said again today in his availability. Uh, and it's true. I mean, you've got to have guys that can cover the league, but uh, you've got to be able to hold up against the run and, and tackle, you know, in the passing game as well. And I think all, all three of those guys are capable of doing that. Jim Wyatt with us on 3HL um, offseason spending. Number one in the NFL, Tennessee Titans over $300 million. Uh, did they get what they needed? But not yet. I mean, they've still got money to spend. But, I mean, I, I think if you had, when you had an offseason and looked at the team's holes, uh, I think, you know, at the start of April, I think you have to feel like you're a lot better positioned than most people thought. I mean, you got, again, two corners – two starting corners that you compare with McCreary, so you feel like you're good at the cornerback position. you got a guy in Calvin Ridley uh, that you compare with DeAndre Hopkins, and hopefully Traylon Burks will take the next step. I know Brian Callahan has some good things to say about, you know, Kyle Phillips and Nick westbrook Akina. They're counting on those guys to to produce. I mean, I think you got to feel pretty good about the receiver room. Uh, you know, did well getting Lloyd Cushingberry as, as as one of the top centers in the league, and um, you know, I think I think Tony Pollard and uh, is going to be really good paired with Tajay Spears. But you know, you look at what's left, um, and, and and there are other guys. I mean, I, did, I obviously I didn't mention you know Kenneth Murray, and I didn't mention Zadik Charles, didn't mention Mason Rudolph, you know. Uh, Sebastian Joseph Day. I mean, some other guys are going to be competing and, and bring depth. But I look at what's left, and I think you still need help. Obviously, you need help at left tackle. Mm-hmm. You need uh, another safety. You need uh, potentially more at inside back. You need more help on the defensive front. So still work to be done, and I think you attack some of that in the draft, and then whatever you don't get there, then you you start signing guys who are still available out there. So, yeah, money well spent, but still work to do. Jimmy, you, um, you've you been around this franchise for uh, some time with coaching changes, new players coming in. What are – um. What are the vibes like? Or is it is the the energy? Because you you know when a, a team is formulating, or you you starting to see some good things started to happen, and with a shift, is, has it have you felt the energy shift with 
the the new coach arriving and Rand and them having their imprints on this um, off season? I mean, I, I, based on what I've the guys I've talked to and people I've been around, yes, but I don't think we'll really get a good feel for that till next week when the off season program begins. Right. I mean, talk to all these free agents coming in; they're here because they believe in Rand and they believe in Brian Callahan and they believe that this team has taken steps to get better. And all these free agents I've talked to are excited about being here. Seen some returning players in the building and obviously seen Will Levis at a couple of you know, off-season events. I know he's fired up and saw Tajay Spears. Uh, and, and you know, where, where I guess at the Super Bowl in Vegas, I've been all over the place. I'm kind of forgetting where I ran into some of these guys. I ran into Spears in <laughs> Vegas, ran into DeAndre Hopkins at the owners' meetings. He's fired up about it. So, Based on my conversations with those guys, yeah, I think the vibes are good. But, you know, players report uh, uh, on April the 8th, uh, and that's when you're really going to start to f- get a feel for what it's like in the building. And uh, it's going to be different. I mean, obviously, you got a new regime, new coaching staff. you got Rand Carthon, who's clearly more relaxed and, and has more say than he's ever had before. He's not deferring to Mike Vrabel. Um, anymore, and uh, so I, I think people are are excited about the direction things are headed, but still early in the off season. These guys got to get on the same page. Yeah, you you look at your mailbag probably from the end of January to this point, things probably cooled down a little bit, huh? Yeah, I, mean, I, I really do think people are generally excited about mm-hmm. the way things have transpired, and and some people have said as much that when. The, coaching change was made they were upset and they like what they're hearing from brian callahan they like the moves that ran carthon and chad brinker have made um, and they feel like this team is is going to be in a position to try to turn the corner and yeah it might not all happen in one year but i, I certainly think you have to feel good about the direction things are going moving forward and i, and I can tell that from whether it's questions in the mailbag the stuff on social media to just me running into people who have been pleasantly surprised by what's happened over the last couple of weeks jim wyatt tennessee titans.com at jay wyatt sports on twitter um jimmy if minnesota or denver trades up in front of the titans you're looking at four quarterbacks going which means at that point the titans would have the third pick in the draft which means joe alt brock bowers dallas turner neighbors harrison adunze like all but Two of those dudes will still be there. Um, so is it still, like, is there a scenario where Jim Wyatt, the fan, uh, might look away from left tackle Joe Alt if certain people are still there at seven? Well, I mean, Alt's the most popular pick. I mean, I did, like, a mock draft roundup, and I think I had 25, 25 of them, and I bet probably 18 of them had Joe Alt going yeah. to the Titans. And uh, I, I, I don't look at that as a slam dunk pick because because of the unknowns and who's going to be there. You know, I, I generally don't think Rand Carthon knows, knows has any idea who he's picking yet. He's probably got a, uh, a grouping of players, but you just don't know what's happening in front of you. I kind of uh, just the, the vibes I get and just the latest buzz from the from the owners' meetings and the stuff I've seen, I'm not going to be surprised at all if four quarterbacks go before the Titans. And uh, if if you've got neighbors or you've got Harrison potentially there, um, you know, I, I, I think I'd have a hard time passing on one of those two guys. Yeah, they need a tackle. There's no doubt about it. And uh, But, you know, I'm intrigued by – playmakers like that guys who don't come around that often I think both those guys are special players I think you still also have the possibility of of moving back getting more picks you know addressing two needs early by doing that uh, so I think a lot of stuff is still on the table I don't I don't think it's as a matter of just automatically thinking okay Joe Walt's the pick and let's roll because um, I, I think you got to consider a lot of different options who did you say? You said neighbors or who? <clears throat> or hey, I mean, if, if Harrison somehow. Oh, Harrison, falls, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean I, I don't think the, the events of the off season have tainted his uh, reputation that's going to cause him to slide. But stranger, you know, I've, I've seen crazy things happen in the draft. And uh, 
uh, and I still think he's a, a spectacular player with great bloodlines who um, is the best receiver in this draft. And uh, uh, But I think Neighbors is right there with him. So um, I, I think if one of those two guys is there at seven, I mean, yes, this team helped itself with Calvin Ridley, but, you know, how much longer is DeAndre Hopkins going to play? You've got to start thinking about the future as well. And, yes, this team needs a left tackle. But um, mm-hmm. Rand has gone out of his way a couple of times in the, in the last week to talk about the depth at tackle in this draft class. And uh, so I think he thinks he can maybe get one in the second round um, as well. What about the uh... – I don't know the the June first, post June first releases and things like that. Could, could they go look for some competition uh, at safety next to Hooker? Yeah, but I don't think you have to wait to them. I, I think the June one stuff is just kind of gets overblown, and I think I think there are guys available now. I think teams, you know, potentially could, um, you know, the draft will will tell you a lot. Like I think teams, a team that picks a safety in the draft could potentially discard a guy. Um, you know, after yeah, doing right, you, know, you might have to wait until, you know, I, I don't, ideally you don't want to wait all the way until, you know, in the training camp, we'll see who's out there, but they're going to be good players available then that you could sign. And they, and this franchise has done that in the past. Um, but, but there's no question. Safety is one of those spots that, that uh, they're still I've got the radar up for. Plus, safety is becoming like that expendable position, kind of like running back. And and I've heard that inside linebacker is going to head that way too. Um, so yeah, you're right. I mean, like after the draft, there could be some really good players on the market at the at that position. What, what yeah, do you and, what do you think about Elijah Molden though? Like, could he hold yeah. up for an entire season at safety? Well, I mean, I, I I like Elijah, and I think I think he you know certainly has grown over the past year. I mean, it was a tough position switch for him to make and uh, and um, and I think another year settled in I think he'll be in a better spot I mean he's extremely smart I mean he's got he's got the football bloodlines himself that have helped him and um, you know I I think you could be do a lot worse than having him be back there pencil him in right now alongside of Monty Hooker and um, but Obviously, the team's still interested in some and in, in other guys as well. So, just have to see how that one plays out. Yeah, put it in pencil. What is that? Ain't bad. <laughs> Ain't bad. Slay lost Slay his still voice at the, his voice. Sorry, at, in Detroit, he left his voice in Detroit. <laughs> We're waiting on the Uber to bring it back. Well, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back up in Detroit about three weeks. I'll see if I can find it now when I'm up there for the draft. It's somewhere between um the, the arena and Tin Roof. Yeah, <laughs> Tim Roof, Detroit, huh? Yeah. Oh man, I'm well over how, how was Detroit? Yeah, I'll be, how was Detroit? Uh, Detroit's made some strides here over the it last few years. I'm looking forward to going back up there. It has good environment. I, I love the uh, how accessible everything is right there in that little two mile radius, if you will. They're trying to get the buildings back. It's still got the old Detroit feel, but you, you can see them them trying to make some some progress though. It was good, good time. At Jay Wyatt Sports <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, you kind of hit on this a little bit, but uh, maybe a little bit more specifically on the way out. Uh, draft needs post-free agency. What do, what do you think there? Uh, I think left tackle. I think safety. I think defensive line. I think inside backer. I think edge rusher. And, uh, and obviously you're still going to – you're still going to add depth at other spots, but um, I think those are the those are the ones that kind of jump out to me. That st- this team still needs uh, needs some bodies and needs guys to compete for starting spots. And, and biggest one is is left tackle, and it's just a matter of how you go about addressing it. Jimmy, um, during the press conference, we had a, we had um, some people you know call in and think and they want they were addressing the knees um, of LeJarrius Sneed. What did you take from him answering that question? Any bad vibes from it or kind of like let's just move on, kind of where we saw Tajay um, in the middle of the season, like the knees are fine? Yeah, I mean, he, he certainly said it wasn't an issue. And I, I know, um, you know, that was a question mark uh, 
around the time the trade was made. Uh, you know, from my understanding, the team felt good about his medical, and uh, and that's why he passed the physical. He, I didn't get the sense that he thought it was a concern at all. Um, and and you mentioned Tajay Spears. I mean, I, I remember all the questions about his knee. So bad. Yeah. Last year, and he had to spend his first press conference just kind of shooting it down and just kind of saying, hey, I'll show you if my knees are fine. And I think he did that. So I think serious need is um, – he doesn't even consider it an issue. And um, so I think he's healthy. I wouldn't give him a big contract like that if they didn't think so. And um, I don't have any concerns about him myself. This is uh, – for those just tuning in, this is what Legereus Sneed said when asked about his knee. Oh man, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with my knee. I'm 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 fine. You know, I played the whole season, and the years before that, I played as well. You know, I had a couple of problems. You know, I had banged up knee before, but I'm good right now. Nothing is really wrong with my knee. So it's not a situation that you have to manage going forward. No, I know what to do with my knee. You know, I'm coming out here to play ball. I mean, go. and stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> I know what to do. Man. So, Jim, you were here for David Givens. It's not like something like that. <laughs> right, like that'll pop up and just be done. No, uh, yeah, and I was here for David because I remember that well. Uh, but no, yeah, I mean, and you know, David got Lee. That's a blast in the past. What year was that? Uh, <laughs> uh, he was. I don't remember that. He, it was before oh, you. He's yeah, such was, a good I, dude I, too. Like well. incredibly intelligent and just man, it just gave out. Great guy, you gave out right in the middle of the field. Uh, yeah, uh, mm. and um, so no, I, I I don't get the sense. I mean, and, and again, I just just got through watching Jer Snead play at a very high level uh, all of 2023 and make one of the mm. biggest plays in the AFC Championship game and being good in the Super Bowl. So, you know, I I don't know why there's so many questions about the guy's knee because he's he's been playing. He's been playing very well and uh, ha- haven't appeared to be an issue to me at all. Jim Wyatt, TennesseeTitans.com. Dive in there. Uh, he's got all your Titans content. You got the mailbag going. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Okay. Y'all have a good week. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Jim Wyatt at Jay Wyatt Sports. Uh, you can watch the show YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. A lot of people talking about their bad knees in the chat. Man, I'm telling you, dog. <laughs> and to add to that, Somebody girl. wrote RIP to all of our knees. Yeah, everybody, everybody's is gone. I think everybody donating them. I but, felt like I tore my ACL walking up the stairs yesterday. Like it was oh my just God. like it, it was is just, your birthday today. You are old officially. Was, yeah, but this was yesterday. <laughs> but it was burning, and like I, I thought I was gonna have to sit down, but I took a few more steps and it, it worked itself out. I was like, man, what an April Fool's joke my knee just gave me. It repaired itself. So it trying did. to get one of those little seats that you put up against the stairs so that you just use right, up. right up to the yeah. up the like steps, me, like me, Yeah, hey. I'll catch up with you guys. To add to it, though, man. Like, as- By the time you get upstairs, everybody's going downstairs. <laughs> yeah, what are we Show about? ends. <laughs> Sorry, Slaydon. No, you're cool. You're cool. The joke just hit my head. It's always, going, it's always going to happen, though, man. When you, when you, you, The longer you play, the more and more they are, they're going to nitpick and pick you apart because that is a part of your history now. Like, I, the same thing when I had back surgery. I came back during the season and played the last 13 games to help us get into the playoffs and – purposely so I wouldn't be asked like, man, how's his back? Could he could he really get back? And lo and behold, when July came around and me to get another contract, that was the first thing. They put a clause in it and everything in my car. I was like, dog, I just I could have made y'all pay for the rest of the year and just sit out and relax. But I came back and showed y'all that I can play so they we wouldn't care, have to go. They don't care nothing about it. They always going to bring it up to be able to negotiate to bring the price down. But – it all works out, man. People know they body, man. 615-737-1045. More from uh, LeJarrius Sneed when we come back. What about the bag that he just got? Does that change anything for him? We'll talk about it next, bag. and he'll answer that question. 3HL 1045 The Zone. Below MSRP? Below MSRP. Below MSRP. It's pretty simple. Two River Sports sells all new non-specialty Fords below MSRP. Sufficient. I don't know what your your issues with your vehicle uh, is, but uh, you can go uh, check out Daniel Gupton and the crew at Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram and let them know, and they'll point you in the right direction, get you in the vehicle that's right for you, and that's what will happen. No pressure at all from them. You just go see them, tell them what you're looking for. 
Again, they'll match you up with a vehicle that's right for you. Take your test drive, go inside. They will help make the numbers work, and it'll be that easy. Their service department is impeccable after the sale as well. They keep up with uh, when you need that oil change, when you need those tires rotated, all those things for you, and they will alert you, uh, and they do an incredible job. Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 3450 Tom Austin Highway in beautiful Springfield, Tennessee. Check them out online, guptonmotors.com. is the website. All the dealership information is there. All the inventory is there as well. That's guptonmotors.com. 3450. Tom Austin Highway, Springfield, Tennessee, just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. Let's go up to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.
Three HL one zero four five. The zone working through Jarius Sneed's comments today to the media. The new free agent cornerback in town for the first time today, and uh, obviously he got paid. What was it? Fifty five guaranteed. Yes. Money doesn't change anything for him. Uh, the money don't change anything. You know, I love this game for the game. The money just for my family. You know, to get them right, take a little pressure off my shoulders. You know, now I can do what I love and play ball. Hmm. Blaine loved Heard that, that comment, before. but you're skeptical <laughs> on that part. I mean, I just, I'm, you, you see it numerous times where. I mean, I'm not saying that this is super negative. I know Slay's looking at me like, get that out I mean, of here. Listen, I'm sometimes. not saying I don't know him. I've never met him. I don't, you know. Sometimes if you're comfortable, yeah, the effort isn't there with right. some people. But listening to the rest of what he's been saying, I don't think this dude's a It does dog, not man. come off that he would be one of yeah. those that was just happy with the bag and and carrying on he does not come off as that kind of guy and on top of it i have this weird confidence in Rand carthon to read people mm. do you know what i mean yep. i agree now you never know and you gotta, you never gotta know. think like what has with him i think you gotta go case by case with him what would have shown you that you know what i mean like he would let up because uh, I at twenty seven, I think shoot, he he in line for another bag, right? Mm-hmm. That's you know what true. I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I think he'll definitely think about that at some point. <laughs> then um, really be set. Well, and the there's a lot of excitement around this franchise. <laughs> yeah, if if Will Levis turns out to be the guy, oh my gosh, this franchise mm-hmm. is in a position in the next two three years to. Make a run. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, that's where you are, right? Like, Make and I possible think that's where, runs. I think that's where mm-hmm. some yep. of the skepticism Plural. is, like, nationally, and pe- everybody picking them forth and the division and all those things. Right. Is if what, he turns do, out, we, do we really know what Will Levis is? I mean, I, I think he's a guy with unabashed confidence mm-hmm. and tons of arm talent. And I think, I think that situation, if you were to put most rookie quarterbacks – in that situation, knowing they're going to get not just hit but pounded, like at literally every play, they wouldn't hold up mentally. Mentally, I'm talking about mentally. And, I think, and he did, man. Yeah. And he'd stand in there and deliver the ball. I keep coming back to that Pittsburgh game, which I know was a loss, but some of those throws he made in that nah, game that under Pittsburgh pressure game was when was I was like, oh, okay. yeah, because yeah. you can talk okay. about the previous game where he threw four touchdown passes, but I go back to that Pittsburgh game where they were, I mean, bringing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you can look at it and you can pick apart if you're going to go through film and say, ah, he could have did this better, could have did this better. But to the naked eye, it wasn't a roller coaster with Will Levis. I didn't feel like, you know what I'm saying? That with all the things, all the elements around him, the old line playing the way it was, you know, your uh, trailing Burks being out, not knowing exactly who's going to be there as far as to catch balls from you outside of D hop. You know, you 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 trying to get um, the king his touches. Like it didn't feel like a roller coaster from the quarterback position. It felt like from the team overall it was, but from his spot, man, I thought that was one that we were able to lean on, and I thought it was it, it was enough along with Derrick Henry and along with um, D Hop to keep going to the stadium because you don't know what's going to happen. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I, I thought he, he gave that jolt of confidence throughout the rest of the season, and that's hard to do as a rookie. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, and <laughs> you also have now a completely Is that different. A period? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You get the punctuation I agree. in there. And yeah. that's all I got to say. Yeah. About. And that's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, huh? um, I'm sorry. I can't. I don't know. The, it's the voice. It's yeah. the voice. I don't know what I'm going either, Babs. I'll be honest. Are you, you're, are you done? You guys you're done? Okay. Uh, no, and we also have to remember different offensive system <laughs> right, that right. honestly might fit him a little bit better, get him some playmakers, yeah. get him some point. weapons, yep. uh, yep. get him a center that can snap him the ball. <laughs> that's the other part that's been overlooked. Right? Like, it was some bad snaps. There was some, I mean, it was, there were some consistently bad yes. snaps. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. 615-737-1045. Uh, Legarius Sneed, um, so I saw a comment from um, 
Andy Reid at the uh, owners' meeting where he was talking about Legarius Sneed and and how they just put him on the opposing team's best receiver and let and let him work. And uh, Legarius Sneed was asking about that, taking uh, away the opposing offense's number one guy. Oh man, you know, if I can eliminate one guy, you know, their best player on the field, it helps everybody else around us. You know, just like the guys on the D line. You know, he gets to the quarterback, he helps us out on the back end, and that's how I feel like on Mills with the corner spot. What is it that allows you to do that so effectively? Right, you know, it's it's, it's all just a mindset, really. You know, you have it in your mind, you can do anything you put your mind to. Do you expect to be doing that here on a regular basis? Oh, uh, hopefully, whatever he put me at, you know, I'm gonna tell him put me wherever he want to put me, and I'm gonna give it my best. How much of an edge do you think that gives a defense if, if a guy is doing that? Oh, man, it, it gives the defense a whole lot. You know, if you eliminate their best player, you know, they have to rearrange their offense and, you know, do things to that they don't do and, you know, let's mess it up. He's so confident. Mess it up. <laughs> hey, but that, so when you get to that level, though, the separator from guys that played in college to the pro is a lot of times just the confidence. Now, you add that confidence on with a championship, like that championship, it's, it's oozing out of them. And who can blame him? Like, that's, that's what he used to. Like, we're going to figure it out. You know what I mean? Okay, we need to go get stops as a defense. All right, Chris Jones, let's go get some stops. Like, it's, <laughs> hey, man, it's different, boy. When you win a chip, boy, you're a different kind of animal. Different so animal. it takes a special skill set, obviously, to be a great cornerback. Mm-hmm. One of those things, loose hips. Uh, you got to have fluid hips. You know, you can't always use your hands. You know, once you get beat, you're going to get beat a couple of times, you know, here and there. But, you know, you got to have fluid hips. How did you come about getting fluid hips? Uh, a lot of <laughs> drills, you know, get with my coaches, you know, and just work on it. <laughs> hey, that's a fair question. Hey, Daddy. Oh, How did man. you get your hips fluid? There were so many ways that he could have answered that. That is hilarious. And, yeah, I mean, it's an obvious next question. It's just funny. Like... <laughs> I mean, I remember back in the day when the butterfly was like the dance. Yeah, yeah. you remember it. That's the way to, that's the way to get right. Hips. The yeah. butterfly. And, uh, oh, that's old. Yeah, let me see, <laughs> let me see that tootsie uh-huh. roll. Uh, yeah, and and I remember my friends would always be like, "What? Why are you so stiff? Like, yeah. you know, why are your hips so stiff yeah. doing the butterfly? You can't be stiff doing that. Yeah. See? So You're right. So your follow up would have been: Did you get the fluid hips from doing the butterfly? Back did in you the day? practice the butterfly back in the day? <laughs> Actually, I don't, he probably wasn't even born when the butterfly was big. Five o'clock hour coming up. If you Jeez. want to comment on what you've heard <laughs> from Legarius Snee, please let us know and and fill his us fluid in. hips. His fluid hips. Six. I said loose hips. Loose hips sink ships. Fluid hips uh, win chips. I guess six one five seven three seven one zero four five. I'm on one today. Rand Carthon talking a lot about Calvin Ridley today and other things. You'll hear from uh, the Titans general manager in the next hour. Stay tuned. 3HL 104.5 The Zone. Butterfly. Before you use a company, don't you like get on your neighborhood Facebook page and be like, hey, I need this. Who should I use? Who'd you use? You go on the Google reviews, all that. That's what I do. Uh, And that's what I did before I needed to replace the all of the windows and doors in my rental property and then some of the windows in my home. And I found Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville and they were the best. If you go look at their Google reviews, you can see how much everybody who has used them likes them. 4.9 with a ton of Google reviews. And the reason Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville is the best, for one, Pella has been around for 99 years. They'll be 100 years old in 2025. So they have the lifetime warranties. But Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville also backs it up with more warranties. A 10-year labor warranty, which is leading in the industry. And the other thing I love is they have the staff in place to make sure that everything is done right and perfect. They also have a deal going on, and we all love a good deal. 50% off qualifying installations and no money down, no interest, no payments for 12 months. Your phone number is 615-249-1910. But the easiest thing to do is schedule your free consultation. Tom Don sent you for that limited time special and go online to schedule that at PellaNashville.com. 
Bank.com. Good evening from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hunk. As Legereus Sneed met with the media today, one of the big conversations was obviously about his knee, and Legereus is like, he is done talking about it. Oh, man, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with my knee. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I played the whole season, and the years before that, I played as well. You know, I had a couple of problems. You know, I had banged up knee before, but I'm good right now. Nothing is really wrong with my knee. So it's not a situation that you have to manage going forward. No, I know what to do with my knee. You know, I'm coming out here to play ball. 
And the University of Memphis just announced that head coach Ryan Silverfield has a brand new five-year deal all the way through 2028. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home 23HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL one zero four five the zone. Brent Doherty with you on a very weird weather day in the Music City. It is now sunny outside downtown, but very cloudy, and the clouds are coming out of the east, which is usually not a good sign. So you saying? And we're still under a tornado watch until like nine. Oh, yeah, they the, extended it. Yeah, there could be another line around eight o'clock. They're saying uh, there should be one. Yeah, there it is, right there. We're watching Channel Two, Shelby Mack uh, rolling through it. Um, Actually, earlier than 8 o'clock. Shoe fly. Don't bother me. Oh, and then a severe line that comes around 8 o'clock. Yeah, that's what she's saying. Okay. Um, that's what she's but, saying. Yeah, she is, literally. Uh, even though we don't have the sound on, I can tell. Um, but, yeah, usually uh, the clouds go from either the west or the north or the northwest, not from the east. <laughs> so that's that's bizarre. But uh, Babsy is here. Her phone's working. What up? Is it, is it fully working? Uh, it's getting there. It's it's getting there. Get it's there. back. I got I got some text capabilities. But if you texted me within the last forty eight hours, I do not have your text. So if it's important, hit me back. There you go. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. You can uh, watch the show live YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. Uh, a lot of y'all saying happy birthday to me, which I really appreciate. This is kind of an interesting one, Timothy. Uh, may or may be an adult now that it's his birthday. By the way, bro, I love you, but I have to say Slay and Dawn are my favorites. <laughs> but happy birthday. But we love you anyway. <laughs> Slay Dog is here. I'm in the building. Boys I'm in the all. building. Hey, I'm in the building. 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 The cricket is still alive and well at 10 Music Circle East, mm-hmm. which should be an easy address to find. Listen, man. <laughs> it's a big 10 on the building to let yeah. you know that number and then also it's call letters on the building all five radio stations logos are on the building i mean hey dude like is <laughs> obviously this man was never caller number five ever it ever had to come here and pick up anything Mm-mm. like and to not be able you know what i ain't even gonna go though <laughs> doordash people do better do better that's do what better. davenport always says um, so we've been rolling through Legarius Sneed audio from his press conference today. What is, what is your guy's uh, initial takeaway from from him meeting with the media for the first time here? And we'll play a little bit more. You want me to go first? Mine's going to be easy. Okay, go. Confidence. That was going to yeah. be my one word. Mm-hmm. Is that just it for everybody? Mm-hmm. I mean, confidence. And competitor. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, too, because, like, Sometimes people can have, like, a false confidence, you right, know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, he's just matter-of-fact yeah. about it. Yeah. Like, I don't even care if you believe what I'm saying here. It just is. It's cool. I'll show y'all. Kind of like what Jim Wyatt just alluded to with um, Tajay Spears when he was talking about his stuff. Like, at some point, it was just like, all right, y'all, I'm going to have to show y'all. And that's kind of sound. That's what it sounded like with Snead. Like, dog, I'm going to hit a ball. Like, <laughs> You know, if y'all just seen my body at work, this is it. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm here the ball. I travel. I travel with the best receiver. That's my job. Love you. Good night. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Try to help y'all. Period. <laughs> that means I'm done, there, everybody. Uh, Legarius Need uh, t- talking about obviously this question was going to come up about the new hip drop tackle ban. Um, his thoughts on that. Yeah, I do not like that. <laughs> yeah, they might be going to put flags on us. Man. Make it tough when you're going into. And you thinking about that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. am I doing? Is am I going to get called? I mean, how does that? Does it affect? How can? How can you say? Like, uh me, me, uh, me. I don't care. Me personally, I'm going to go make the tackle whichever way. If it's that way, I will take the flag. Uh, whatever. Yeah. I'll make sure I get them down though. 
That that's the that's the main goal. I wonder if in the defensive rooms and with the coaches, like you got to kind of account for it. Like it's gonna happen. It just depends who the officiating crew is. You know what I mean? Like the main goal is, hey y'all, tackle him. Like I understand what we we're trying to get out of. It. Like don't do it. But I don't want you out there thinking about not doing it. You got to go play. Game's too fast. Too fast to be thinking of that. You got a big old dude, big tight end coming at you. You think, ah, wait a minute. Oh, let me. Oh, I'm, I ain't got the angle. Oh, what? A, and then. I better not it, do yeah, this. Like I'm going to get the fine afterwards. Yeah, start thinking about that with Mark Andrews, who got hurt on it. Um, But think yeah. about that with him. Think about that with a Kelsey. Think, think about that with George Kittle. Like, the, like, like these. Big old tight ends that can move. Think about bringing them down a who certain type of way. Was it Johnny Smith who said, uh, like, don't take that out of the game. Like, there are situations where that's the only way they can get us down. Yeah, and they should feel like that because one thing about it, you got to that means you have to resort to something else. And then when people start going and hitting low and trying to clip them legs and clip them knees, then you start having those injuries. So, I mean. You just, I mean, football's a rough sport, and the guys man. that play it know it. They know it. They know it. They choose to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, his fans know it. I mean, D'Amico Ryans was talking about, you know, you don't teach the hip drop tackle, but he said he thinks that they happen because, you know, guys are so um, into keeping the head out of the game that they end up arm tackling, and arm tackling leads to the hip drop tackle. True. And it leads to broke, broken tackles. Yep. <laughs> like, I mean. Remember these little arms you want to. These little arms. <laughs> he is aggressive. Where's that aggressive style come from? Uh, I actually don't know where it came from. I've uh, always been an aggressive guy. Born that way. But the last yeah. two years, I made up in my mind that I'm going to put hands on guys. You know, I've seen it that it worked, you know. So I'm going to put my hands on guys, mess timing up, and, you know, they can't do nothing with it. They can't do nothing within five yards of me putting my hands on and slow time. And I'm quarterback looking away. So, yes, yeah, it's all yeah, mental. <laughs> Sound like he got a method. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Hmm. <laughs> uh, he also comes off <clears throat> um, intelligent and, like, I feel like he knows exactly what works for him, you know? And maybe that's a product of what he learned in Kansas City, how they kind of deve- help to develop him and all of that. But I feel like he knows what his game is, what he's good at, uh, he's clearly confident in it, and uh, part of that confidence, I feel like, comes from how he feels, how well he understands his body in the game. Yeah, yep, I agree with that. I, I think you, I, I get the same kind of vibes listening to Roger McCreary talk. When we first heard him talk, right. he was like, "Man, dude, just a ball player." Yeah, you know, that, you get the well, you get and the then same when they short arms moved yeah. him inside too, <laughs> right. and and you heard him. Uh, I think we sat there and talked to him. Um, during camp, mm-hmm. and he was kind of talking about the switch and how it yep. fits him, and and that confidence came mm-hmm. out again. Yep. Some people, man, they just you, they they just they're confident in what they do. Like, there's no need to go outside the realm or none of that. Like, this is what I do. Like, I, I'm I'm at a good spot. It's, he seems to be one of those guys. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five at three HL one zero four five on Twitter. Uh, Going to get to uh, Rand Carthon. As a matter of fact, let's do this, and then we'll go. Uh, we'll go to Bobby and Franklin. Want to talk about Will Levis? Which I get. We were talking about Will Levis earlier. Um, big year two for him. There's no doubt about that. Um, what made Lajarius need an attractive target to Rand Carthon? He covers people. We know that, you know, and you guys have talked about it, him being able to match, you know, and go in the slot, play outside and take away the other team's number one. But again, the physicality, the willingness to come up and make tackles, All a lot of the greats in the game, we know Coach Prime, you know, was probably arguably the best cover corner ever, but people always criticized him for his quote unquote lack of tackling, uh, if you will. But what he brings to us in LJ and what Cheeto is going to bring on the, you know, on the opposite side are two guys that, you know, like I said before, I can remember if it was with Jim or with Paul, you know, a lot of the run game is this toss crack game, right? Because now these corners can't come and cut the lineman, you know, underneath. You have to be physical and be able to set the edge and, you know, force it back to the stack. And we have two corners now that are physical that will put their face on people setting the edge and send it back to guys like Jeff and Kenneth and all our guys coming in, you know, running, chasing the ball. So that's an impressive part, 
you know, about his game that I think that really stands out. They keep talking about the physicality now that they have a corner, um, which kind of tells you what kind of style they're going to try to get to on defense. They're not there yet, not close. With, um, but it, this goes right in line with with what Denard said when he got the job. I want at- I want to attack. Where did he come from? Denard Wilson. On the Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, and Philly. Mm-hmm. What were they? Physical. Physical. <laughs> Attacking. Attacking. Yeah. Give us. But some you got to have the dudes to have, do that. Bingo. Bingo. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Bobby and Franklin. Bobby, what's up? Hey, appreciate you guys and what you do each day. It's a lot of fun. When I jumped in the car, you were talking about Will. But I will say, yeah. as far as Snead goes, mm. you know, it, it seems like it's just going to play out on the field. He's going to say, look at what I do on the field. And I like to hear that. But mm-hmm. my, my comment about Will Levis is, you know, Derrick Henry wasn't the only Titan to win angry runs uh, from Kyle mm. Brandt last year. Will Levis won. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, if you watch a boxing match and a guy tastes the punch of the other guy and knows he can take it, Sometimes that can change the whole perspective of the fight. So my question is, you know, Will Levis definitely got some punches, and I feel like he was able to take them. What is that going to do for his confidence next year? Well, I'll I'll tell you one thing it did. His teammates now are all in on him. Because, man, when the locker room sees their quarterback, like – because, you know, quarterbacks in in the game in the locker room a lot of times are viewed as pretty boys and all that stuff. But when they lower their shoulder – and he went after Jalen Ramsey – yeah. You want to talk about physical. Yeah. I mean, he went through a dog. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. immediately that locker room was like, this is my guy. Yeah. If he's willing to do that for us, this is my guy. Oh. So I know that about him. Mm-hmm. We're going to learn a lot more this I year. It's a, it's a different system. And that confidence probably grows when you know you got protection. So the same confidence and not second yep. guessing like that, that old line blocking. More from Rand Carthon when we come back. Uh, he'll talk about how they got Calvin Ridley. Also, you're going to want to hear this uh, comment from Bo Nix talking about how football in the South is just too important. You want to hear that. 3HL 104.5 The Zone. Well, perhaps it's what you say, Buck. Come on. Uh, Hey, let's talk about the Preds. Buck's not allowed to go there anymore, by the way, because they lost last time he went. Uh, But the last Preds home game of the season and fan appreciation night is Saturday, April 13th. Uh, about a little over a week away. See the Preds take on the Columbus Blue Jackets, 7 o'clock at Bridgestone Arena. The Preds looking to continue their march to the playoffs. Get tickets for that game at NashvillePredators.com slash tickets. Now, I mentioned the Preds push into the playoffs. The best way to score the most savings and access to Stanley Cup playoff tickets is by becoming a season ticket member. So lock in your seats at NashvillePredators.com slash season tickets. Kids. Go Preds.
Three HL one zero four five the zone. <laughs> You're such a dude. <laughs> Babs like it didn't even rain. I go, yeah, it was raining sideways, and I think there was hail involved while you were doing your outdoor lighting spot. And you even said you need outdoor lighting so you can see better when it's raining. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> she was like, yeah, that's right. That's right. How did I remember it and you didn't? I don't know. My brain is fried. Turkey. Just like slay. My boys. Yeah, I think like your weekend also affected our brains somehow. Probably yeah. so. It should have. Some sort of osmosis thing going on there. I did it's enough. It's like brain osmosis. I did enough for it to fix you guys. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think that voice is going to be better tomorrow or not? I'm, I'm not sure because I kept talking today. I did seven. Hey. <laughs> <eight. laughs> I did all gay dub. I did uh, the sleigh ride. Yeah, you I'm need to this. say no. <laughs> Coming from you. Tomorrow you right. get to sit down with Todd Furman. Oh, shoot, I forgot all about that. Wait, you're doing what? What time? Oh, one o'clock. Yeah. You're doing what? Um, sitting down with Todd Furman. <laughs> for <laughs> his podcast? For the, um, yeah, the Bet the, Bet the Board podcast? For, I think the Final Four. I told him I don't know much about no NC State. Well, you better learn. Oh, no, no. I'm just talking about what I know. Purdue, Alabama, <laughs> and Yukon. <laughs> That's a, yeah. I told you don't want to get your learn on from nah, NC State? I already told him. I, I know they got DJ Burns. And he just backs you down, and that's and then he may pass it out. Pretty he can simple. pass well. Pretty simple. And he throws that little lefty hook up. We're going to see what his conditioning like because Big Edie's in shape. We'll say that. Big Edie. Big boy in shape. Yeah. What's that, what's that shoot is that guy game. with? Mm-hmm. It's not like he's extra like move right or anything. Yeah, no, I mean, whole, whole game every game. It's yeah, been almost. it's been documented. Mm-hmm. He does. I did. I did think he was tired. The when he shot the air ball at the free yeah, throw line. I'm did, like, yeah, yeah he's exhausted. Yeah. yeah. They tried to they tried to buy time for him, but every time <laughs> they took him out, it was like Tennessee would get momentum. So yeah, stay with him. National Player of the Year, back to back. Probably well size twenty four shoe. I'm looking it up. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Why can't they just tell me in the in the search? Why do I got to click on stuff? Oh, there it is. Size twenty. That's a small foot for a big man. Yeah, I'm fourteen. He's seven four. Lord. Twenty ain't that big. He's eight inches taller. What than was me. Shaq? I think Shaq might have been twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, he only seven one. I, I will tell only people: do not search. LeBron James feet while we're talking about shoes. Shaq, what, yeah, Shaq was size 22. <laughs> 22, yeah. Seven, seven, one. Seven, one, mm-hmm. 22. Kevin Durant and Yao are both 18. So if he actually has a small man. small feet for that size body, will that get him at some point with his knees? Shaquille O'Neal's <laughs> Am I looking too much yeah. into it? feet are larger than average at 22 right. for seven, there one. There you go. Big old, he's bigger than average. Average bear. Hmm. Are we done with shoe talk? Reese said. Yeah, his, we're done with that. His name, one of his kittens. It's kind of a weird Big conversation. Slay. Next kitten will okay. be Baby Babs. Next kitten. They've already got 12 feral cats. No, one of them Baby had, Babs one of them had Reese babies. the second. One, one of them had, had babies. Yep. He said he's a grandfather. And then he said Mayor Reese is going to be the yeah. other one. Oh, okay. Spooky Reese is the one that had the babies. <laughs> <laughs> Reese and Lauren just out there, man. Out the Bowling Green area, South Central Kentucky. I mean. Just dominating. 615-737-1045. You want in? We talked a lot about uh, LeJarrius <laughs> Snee. You heard from the uh, new corner earlier today. Rand Carthon always, always also took the mic today. Uh, and he goes in, Hunk, on uh, how the Titans got Calvin Ridley. I mean, Calvin, you know, I think LJ said it. You know, he's one of the better separators in the league. You know, um, I had a moment uh, last, it was last offseason, um, in our courtship, you know, of, of uh, Hop. And a bunch of those guys were out in Arizona working out, and it was Ridley, and it was Debo Samuels, and it was D Hop. And so all these guys were working out. And the consistent thing you heard out of Arizona was everybody was stealing tricks from Calvin. You know, a guy that had been out, you know, a year and everyone was talking about how legit that he looks and how they were, you know, these are all pro pro bowl players saying they were taking tools out of his bag, you know, to help their game. And then you to actually see that translate in the season, 
you know, him being able to get open, separate, you know, his speed, you know, his ability to track the ball, like those things stand out. And so the to actually have the opportunity um, to even consider him was something that we had a part of our plan. But it was in our mind, really, it was more of a pipe dream. You know, like, can we afford these guys and get, you know, Ridley? And it initially started with a conversation with myself and Chad. And uh, I won't go into the details of how that conversation Chad started. Chad kind of did. Uh, I'm laughing because Chad's over here and he knows it. Um, but <laughs> it was one of those things where we agreed to talk so the Brian. next day. You know, let's just say it that way. Like, let's just talk about it in the morning. <laughs> and then it led to a conversation with myself and Callie that same night. Sleep and on, on my drive home, I talked to Miss Amy about it. You know, because, again, we like to keep her in the loop of all things. And so um, we came in the next morning and everybody kind of had that look like, let's do it. You know, let's try. And let's and we did. And, you know, we were able to pull it off and show you how this world works now. Um, we legitimately we get the deal done. The deal gets agreed to. So we're in the office. You know, we're having a moment. And, you know, in this particular moment, it was myself. It was Chad. It was Callie and Nick Holtz. So we're high-fiving and bro-hugging and doing all of that. And so we're like, hey, let's get Calvin on the phone. Let's congratulate him. So we literally, this is all happening in within 90 seconds. Wow. We call Calvin. We're FaceTiming him, and we're, we're excited, and he's excited. And then my phone beeps, and it's Miss Amy. And I pick up the phone, and I'm like, hello? And she's like, is this true? <laughs> and I'm like, is what true? And she was like, did we just get Calvin Ridley? And I'm like, what the hell? Like, is it out already? It's been like, we, I was like, we're on the phone with him right now, you know, congratulating him that we got this done. But it just kind of shows you just the level of our teamwork, you know, and making it happen and getting it done. And like I said before, it's, it's not about me. It's not about Cali. It's not about any one individual in our, in our program. It's just about who gives us the best advantage to get something done that's going to make us better, and that's the route we go. Man, this GM... That was so open. This GM offers so much insight. So is the head coach. Man, if they keep heading down this path, it's going to be fun with these two. <laughs> Hopefully our media brethren won't do anything to screw them. Yeah. So, they, so they, they don't oh, get... Oh, you know it's feeling. coming. So they don't get defensive. <laughs> oh, so I'm going on. Because, like, I understand getting the stories and all those things, but this is so interesting. That's good. Is it? <laughs> Miss Amy calls. Hello. Is it true? He's like, what the hell? <laughs> That's good news, Travis Fast. I mean, Especially so that means somebody in the building involved. called and told her, right? They had to. Shout or it got out. Text. Or it just got out. I don't remember how that went down. Somebody probably congratulated her. Hey, regardless, <laughs> you got it done. Amy's got eyes and people everywhere. Absolutely, right. But like, if they had that conversation, he said this was ninety seconds. So the agent talks to a reporter like that, and then it hits Twitter. I mean, fast. That fast though. It could ninety second. I mean, that's fast. <laughs> it is fast. So we were talking about this with um, Jim Wyatt earlier uh, about free agency not being over. Rand Carthon. Still trying to build up front on defense. No, we want to build a complete defense. Um, you know, and in, in, in the past, we've had our strength be up front, you know, and that's kind of shifted right now. But we're still looking uh, to address those positions as needed. Um, from a free agency standpoint, free agency is open. It's not over. So we're going to continue to look. And then obviously we got the draft, which is taking our focus now. Uh, so we're going to continue to look to add, you know, up front um, on, on all sides of the ball. Um, but it, we're, we're still working on that. Safety is another position. Uh, we'll, he'll address that in, uh, in just a second. What's interesting, and he said this before, um, they wanted Autry and Aziz to come back. Like they wanted that to happen. He calls them the Avengers. Talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, there was a scenario uh, that Van and Chad put together where we could have assembled the Avengers, um, but <laughs> we wouldn't have had money to sign our draft class or do anything else. So those were <laughs> scenarios. Um, 
but uh, Danico and um, and Aziz were two vital members, you know, of our our team. Um, Aziz was an official captain, and uh, Danico was an unofficial captain, um, as you guys know. Uh, so those guys were, you know, play huge parts for us, and you know, it's going to suck to see them leave and have to play them twice a year. But um, you know, we feel like we'll, you know, we'll find ways to to get better and replace those guys. Where did Aziz end up going? No, Archer went to Houston, right? Yep. He went to Houston too, didn't he? Yeah, they both he, went to Houston. Yeah. Oh wow, that was nice, nice job, Houston. Mm. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh huh. As a Titan fan, I don't want to see Audrey. <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be good. You got an old line for him. Don't get ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get ugly. Everybody be prepared. Um, we've talked a lot about uh, the cornerback position today. Clearly better at corner um, with, with Cheeto and with uh, with Jerry Sneed and also the ability to let Roger McCrary do what he does best and slide inside. Uh, Rand Carthon talking about the two new additions at cornerback. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps us tremendously out from a coverage standpoint on the back end. And, you know, if you guys know Denard and what he wants to do, I think the guys that we signed uh, in Cheeto and um, and LJ, I think they both, you know, fit what he wants to do uh, from a coverage standpoint. And then having Roger here, you know, Roger's played outside, he's played inside, and so he fits um, as well. So it gives us, you know, a legitimate, you know, top three out of the gate, and we're going to continue to add guys. We're going to expect guys that were here last year to step up, you know, and earn those other spots. But uh, we, we're bringing in scheme fits for what we're going to do defensively. I think that makes sense, right? Like, and that's mm-hmm. that's kind of what they're all saying. Yep. Yep. Mount up, baby. You can tell what you can tell the philosophy behind the offense by what they're doing roster wise and by the defense, and mm. and they probably have further to go defensively, maybe. But um, y'all right, y'all right. You fix left tackle, things are a lot better. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I know. I, I mean, know. you just have. I know. You have to. You have to address it. It's too glaring. I hate that oh, they're oh. in that position, though. They are with the freaking playmakers that'll be on the board at seven. I know. This one got you on though. Okay, I'm really. I know, but I would like to have like that rookie contract to go along. Like you would be tiered with those wide receivers. Oh, it would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Good step. <laughs> All right, uh, this is another topic that's been uh, on this show and others. Um, what do you do next to Amani Hooker? Elijah Molden um, needs some competition there. Uh, Rand Carthon talking about and, and it's and it's interesting when we talk about safeties and how it's kind of going down the road of the running back um, with all of the really good safeties that were released this year. It's kind of showing you that. Uh, Rain Carthon talked about uh, seeing how the draft affects the market for free agent safeties. Well, I think um, just the way the league goes, I mean, everyone is going to be, you know, excited about the new shiny toys um, that are the that is the draft class. And, you know, once once we get through the draft and we see where teams have, you know, made their needs because there are other teams that need safeties. um, I think it could take the safety market either way, uh, depending on, you know, who's available, you know, at that time. And uh, we've been well positioned uh, and well thought out in our plan of still being able to attack you know, post-draft, uh, kind of like we did with DeAndre last year, to be in position to sign a player if we need to. Mm. Jim White basically said the same thing yeah. today, um, yeah. which all of that makes sense. You okay? The throw, man. Battling through. How's that tea doing? It's gone. Also, where'd you get the tea? Was that from here? Oh. Oh, you brought it on. You brought everything in. Yep. Except for the Chick-fil-A that took two hours to get, get it here. It went to another home. <laughs> Actually, hope, it went to multiple homes. I hope somebody <laughs> got to enjoy it. Yeah. I felt so sorry for you when you said that. It went to another home. Yeah. <laughs> it's somebody like one of Reese's cats. Got a nice chicken salad and a five piece nugget. Hmm. He's just looking up in a dream like state. Um, that's what you ordered? Cobb salad? It was amazing. Oh. Chick fil A. With extra chicken. The Cobb salad is amazing at Chick fil A. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I can't ever make myself do it because I just want fries. <laughs> you can get fries too, Babs. Listen, no, cold Chick Fil A fries though. Fries. I can. Cold Chick Fil A fries though. 
Not good. No, any cold fries are not good. Yeah, you have to eat the fries first. That's definitely true. Um, <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm going to give away sounds tickets in about three minutes. Oh, so sounds, stick around sounds for tomorrow night. O- opening day was tonight. I haven't heard, um, but uh, this for tomorrow night. I the love this. Off the field. What? The tarp is off the field. Yeah, but there's a whole bunch of rain about to hit. Just telling you what they just tweeted. <laughs> That's just sad. Tarp is off the field. <laughs> And it had a picture of a beautiful baseball field. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just <laughs> telling you. All right. Well, they can take that tarp off all they want to. Should be fine tomorrow, though. Is oh, it? yeah. It'll be awesome tomorrow. Love that place. And we're giving away tickets. All right. When we come back, <laughs> y'all have to hear this comment from, I mean, Slay hit us with this at like 645 this morning. Well, three of us. One of us couldn't see it. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. Oh, this will be good, man. You haven't heard this yet? Oh, I've heard it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen, I I didn't see what you guys said about mm-hmm. it, so. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we were fired up. Uh, yeah, Bo Nix talking about the differences in being a quarterback in the South compared to at Oregon. Where he grew up. Yes. That's next. Sir HL 104.5 The Zone. I want to tell you about my friends at Brentwood Jewelry. Everybody's got gifting responsibilities throughout the course of the year. Are you okay over there? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, my friends at Brentwood Jewelry can help you out. Uh, 7012 Church Street in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Am I supposed to be doing this or you? Is that why you're laughing? No. Oh, no. It's all you. you. It's all you. I ain't got no voice anyway. It does make it hard. Oh, man. But things are so easy at Brentwood Jewelry. The Amomaly family, go get to know them. They're awesome people. I love going in to visit with them. I take watches in to get them. Uh, um, sometimes they run out of battery or whatever because I have so many that I don't wear them all. Uh, and then I go in there and talk with Brandon and Salem and all the crew, and they're awesome people. I love standing there watching them uh, interact with their clientele. And uh, you're going to love these guys as well. Anything you need, um, gifting-wise, uh, from a jewelry perspective, they've got you covered. Incredible watch selection as well, including uh, pre-owned Rolexes. You can check them out. Brentwood Jewelry, also here to help you pop the question. Let them help you take the stress out of selecting the perfect engagement ring. They can help you find a beautiful ring in your ideal budget. You can browse their incredible selection um, of one-of-a-kind rings or talk with their custom design specialist to create a stunning ring as remarkable as your loved one. 7012 Church Street in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Exceptional style, exceptional deals every day for more than 50 years. Visit BrentwoodJewelry.com. Lucky you. Yes, I'm talking to you. If the storm came through and knocked your power out and your home was A-OK, no power outage for you, you must have cove generators. They got to be nearby. You probably know Generator Dave, don't you? Yeah, first name basis, second name basis. Generator Dave, the experts in generators. That's what cold generators do. That's all they do. Free new seven-year warranty with the purchase of a Generac home standby generator. Now, through May 12th, Babsy. Yes. How much can they save? Uh, that's like a $800 value Ooh. right there. A free seven-year warranty. It's only through May 12th, though. So go ahead and jump in on that. But uh, we've got more. What? If you mention Slay mm-hmm. and me oh. and 3HL and 104.5 The Zone, you get an additional $500 off your generator purchase. So say goodbye to power outages. Say goodbye to stressing when the storms come through like they have today. Cove Generators will take care of you. Your premier Generac home standby generator dealer, call them today for that free seven-year warranty, and be ready for the next power outage. 931-559-3311. Cove Generators, C-O-V-E, generators.com. Stay connected through it all.
Three HL one zero four five the zone women's basketball. It's a perfect. Got some ratings information that LSU Iowa game man last night. What is that? What is but first. Baseball ticket giveaway. Yes, another winning Wednesday on 3HL. Tickets. Except it's Tuesday. <laughs> oh, Am I supposed to give these away? No, yeah, no, you are. Okay, well, it's not winning Wednesday, honk. <laughs> it's You're Tuesday. Like I thought I was the anchor man in this no. group. I just read what's I in front of me. I just read what I was supposed to read. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also just double checked, and yes, it is the right day as well. Like everything is correct on this except for one word. Okay. <laughs> you just out um, there confusing people. I blame Rich. Yeah, don't, don't shoot the messenger. Let's go back to that statement from a second ago. <laughs> Rich is taking shrapnel. Right? He thought his day was over. Nope. Got you, Rich. <laughs> this one's on you. Funny. It's not Wednesday. Uh, tickets for you to win from Babs Prize Closet, which is sponsored by Artisan Custom Closets. Caller number five. Right now, you win two tickets to see the Nashville Sounds host the St. Saint Paul Saints tomorrow night at First Horizon Park, thanks to Artisan Custom Closets. So go ahead and call in. Good luck to you. 615-737-1045. Do not call in if you cannot go to the game or don't have somebody that can go to the game. That's right. Because that's mean. Two tickets to the sounds. Visit ArtisanCustomClosets.com today. Say goodbye to clutter and hello to calm with the Artisan Custom Closets. Tornado watch in effect until 9 o'clock uh, still Ooh. for much of the viewing area. Um, there's some really rough stuff going around the Bowling Green area right yeah. now. Oh, It's it's nasty. There's What do you say? You don't want to see magenta? And there's, there's magenta. Ooh, magenta right there. all Ooh. over see, like, Bowling Green. So you guys be there? safe. See, you also don't want to see those uh, uh, hook echoes. Mm-hmm. See those little hooks in that in that uh, bit of um, color? Yeah, it's not good. Magenta and purple is bad. That's rotation. That's rotation. So just, Bowling Green, you guys be safe. Yep, uh, just north of the Natcher uh, Highway Parkway and east of Bowling Green right now. There is there is a uh, storm cell, and I know a lot of y'all in South Central Kentucky listen, and so um, we love you. Get the uh, get get to your safe spot. Um, there is another line of storms that it looks like is going to come through Nashville in just a little while as well. Uh, USC and UConn, you said that they should have flipped these games. They should have flipped those games. The yeah, excitement. and that LSU-Iowa should have been the second game. Yep. <laughs> as it is, USC-UConn, 6.7 million viewers. I told you uh, the Sweet 16 game between Iowa and Colorado had almost 7 million, which was the second largest audience for a women's game ever. Mm. LSU-Iowa last night? 12.3 million people. I'm telling you. Wow. Like, everybody was tuned in for that. And to, to put that in perspective, 15.1 million viewers for NC State Duke, which was more viewers than all but five college football games last year. So that 12.3 number, freaking huge. And you found the story. Uh, at 12.3 million viewers last night, the Iowa LSU game had more viewers than any women's college basketball game ever. The 2023 NBA Finals, the 2023 World Series, the 2023 Orange Bowl, the Big Ten Championship game, the Pac-12 Championship game, the Big 12 Championship game, ACC Championship game, Peach Bowl, Thursday Night Football, every 2023 college football regular season game except Ohio State and Michigan. Wow. Jeez. And... At one point, Ryan Rucco, who does the play by play, who did the play by play last night, and ir- just irritates and annoys me endlessly. Why? Everything is elongated and in a high pitch. Yeah. LSU the three. <laughs> I mean, dude. <laughs> Y'all watch. I guess he'll be on no, the games now, again. Now that you say that, like, I yes. Nothing personal. I don't know the guy. I'm just like his his no, style. He's awesome. not, his style is not for me. You know him? Uh, I don't know him well, but yes. But you think he's awesome? So I, need I mean, to, I, I think, need to show. I think up he's now. a good guy. Okay. Well, I'm sure. But yeah, it doesn't I, matter. I mean, I'm sure he's a good guy. What about Bo Nix? What is he talking about? This is going to irritate. Is he a good guy? I don't know, but this is going to irritate yeah. anyone in the South, which I guess is most of y'all. He'll be like, on the board. Like, on the like, board. Listen to this. The different from Bo Nix, who grew up an Auburn fan, played at Auburn then transferred to Oregon and compares the differences in terms of like football in the South compared to football in the Pacific Northwest. In a sense, the hostility and the, maybe the unhealthy pressure that is added to, you know, 18 to 22 year olds by, 
you know, outside um, noise and fans. Like it's almost like a, a unhealthy obsession in the South. I mean, I, I, I was that way growing up. I thought it was, you know, life or death football. And you move out here and, you know, you play the game as hard as you can and, and you got great passion for the game. And, you know, it's just a little bit more laid back in, in a way. And it's, it's a lot more like, you know, we're proud of the person, the, the person you are out there on the field. And like, if you give a great effort and if you try really hard and, and, and you know, obviously we're out there to win. No, nobody goes out there to lose and look bad um, in front of a bunch of people. But I think that's the difference, um, quite frankly, is the what is put into college football in the South. And then, you know, how out here football is just the game and, you know, we, we find the joy in it. Yeah. Hey, you just – He's just in the backyard having a good time and while everybody having a little barbecue. You just gonna throw the football around, I, huh? I don't think he has any clue as to what he just did. No. In terms of showing like what his mindset is. And it's all well and good. That's fine if that's how you want to live your life. But these general managers are looking for throat slash quarterbacks. Not like hey, that man, was a terrible if we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. what there no pressure on the field. Like that's right. He, he he did he did the right thing. He went to the right place. That's 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 what it is. I, he did so, go to the right place, and he played better. That's right. All you Pac-12 guys, West Coast loving, hey, they guess what they the go. NFL is that or not that? Yeah, that all day. It's it's, it's listen, man. I, I was explaining to some friends of mine, um, and then explaining to the people that was playing that was security while we were in Detroit, um, at the game. They were like, dude, we've never seen a crowd like this. I said, yeah, it's different. College is about different passion. You will never get it in a pro game. It's gonna be some. It's gonna be some some franchises though that deliver. But the passion that you get from college sports, especially the SEC, is not for everyone, man. I promise you that. Dog, we eat, sleep, drink it down here. Ain't no if, ands, or buts. Like, but you, what do they do in the NFL? They eat, sleep, and drink it. Right. And people get fired into business and all these right. things. They don't want that, like, that's uh, right. Wally gagging guy. Like, uh, uh, that's cool. I mean, that's who he is. It's, it's, they I want cutthroat cool. competitors. Your, uh, your number one overall pick is a little bit different, too, though. What? Hey, Caleb, Caleb, quarterback. I, yeah, I give me that passion all day. I, I take it all day long. I take it all day long. Am I, man, competitive spirit? Give me that. I take it. It's that. unhealthy in the South. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's show wheels. He ain't lying. He I right. know he's not lying. It is unhealthy. And guess what? And guess what? I, I want love it all. It. Yeah, I want it. <laughs> yeah. I want it all. All right, coming up on tomorrow's show, Coach Mack will join us at 320. Tracy Wilson, the wolf. Oh. She will be at. The- <laughs> <laughs> You did that before. It's in the promo for tomorrow if you listen. Uh, but Bab's like, that wolf sounds like he's about to die. I'm like, is that a wolf? It's a tired wolf. Uh, also, Todd Furman tomorrow. Love y'all. Appreciate all the birthday wishes. Uh, y'all mean everything. Good night. God bless. Happy birthday, Mayor. Happy birthday, y'all. See ya. Wouldn't mean the best.